live from Nelson County High School. It's time once again for Colonels Football. The Alta Vista Colonels on 105.5 KD Country. I am Kyle Haney. With me, as usual, is the big O, Agent Zero, Oscar Briggs. Oscar, nice, cool fall evening. Settle in for some good high school football. It's a great trip up to Nelson County. Settle here right outside of Lovington, Virginia. Mountain, mountain, mountain setting, easy for me to say, mountain mm-hmm. setting, leaves starting to change, beautiful mountain, mountains in the backdrop, uh, new turf on the field, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but it should be a, a, it's a great night for college, for high school football. Yeah, plenty of good uh, angles and things to discuss here in the Subway pregame show, a whole lot going on, of course the Colonels last week, big victory over the Dan River Wildcats, 14-0, obviously. I had to bring that up to Coach Mike Charnas. We saw so many good things in that game, Oscar. Uh, I mean, it really was the best ball game we've seen in a while, certainly since last season. Obviously, uh, this year the Colonels have really been running rough shot over most everybody else. Dan River comes in, we expect a good game, and that's exactly what they went out to this. You talked about it being the best game that we've seen all year. It certainly was, and, and for, you know, of the 48 minutes. All but six, it was as, it was a pick em. Mm-hmm. Uh Alta Vista took over and took score with about six minutes left in the half and 40 left in the uh, minutes away. Boy, there was a little difference between those two teams on both sides. Uh, both teams were able to move the ball some, but it was a very, very physical, hard ball, clean, uh, great football game. Yeah, defense and special teams really loomed large for both ball clubs, and uh, Coach Sharnas will get into that some in his interview. And as you can expect, he was very complimentary of the Wildcats and Coach Farrell Edmonds' football team. New football team here tonight as the Alta Vista Colonels are on the road, as we set up in Nelson, taking on the Governors. We'll talk more about them and more about this ball game as the Subway pregame show continues. Let's hear from the head coach now after a quick timeout. Alta Vista Colonels set to tee it off against the Nelson County Governor's kickoff. About 25 minutes away, you're going to hear every second of the action live on 105.5 KD Country. For a storm door that offers style and convenience, come to English's Building Supply in Alta Vista for a Pella self-storing storm door. These doors feature screens that are always there when you need them. And Pella's self-storing storm doors are backed by Pella's lifetime storm door protection plan. Come by English's Building Supply. See the full line of Pella Storm Doors. English's. English's is your complete home center. Get a $15 mail-in rebate during October. Brother needs a thicker, and sister wants a ride. Uncle needs a sports car to keep him satisfied. Mama, she wants comfort, luxury and style. And daddy, he just wants a deal that's going to make him smile. Everybody's happy, you can hear them all say We're glad we went to Fellers, Fellers Chevrolet Competition for all dealers in Central VA A short drive will save you money, Fellers Chevrolet In Alta Vista In the past century, our community has grown And Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service has grown too Alongside the families they've known for so long Finch and Finch is proud to have served you over 100 years A family business, Finch & Finch Funeral and Cremation Service, dedicated to your service. Finch & Finch Funeral Homes, we're here because we care. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. Back here on the Subway pregame show, talking once again with the head coach, Mike Sharnas, and Coach Sharnas, uh, Coming off a pretty big win last week, 14-0 over a, uh, a rugged and ready Dan River team. You mentioned uh, that they always seem to give you problems, and last week you guys get out of there with a 14 nothing win, and uh, obviously the closest game you've had all year, but it seemed like your defense and your special teams once again carried you to victory. Yeah, we told the kids that, that uh, Dan River would come down ready to play, and they, they really, uh, I thought they had a pretty good game plan, and they were physically, mentally ready to uh, to go against us, and they have, like we said last week, every every year. Uh, and as uh, we've talked about our defense before, they once again uh, bent a little bit on uh, a drive or two, and then got real big down on the goal line. And, and the, the kicking game with Walker Allen was huge. And if we can if we can continue to play defense like that, and and with the kicking game, 
we're going to be in a whole lot of ball games, you know, win some ball games. And we just offensively, we have to shore up uh, some things all the way across the board. Uh, our linemen, our receivers, our backs, my coaching, play calling, this and that. So whenever you struggle a little bit offensively, um, we had one touchdown call back. I don't, you know, I've struggled a whole lot worse than last Friday night. But uh, when you're used to putting up the number of points that we have and all, I think that's why we have that type of uh, feeling about it. But we didn't play well offensively. And uh, we're, we just, we're just working hard to, to change that around. Well, you mentioned Walker Allen in there, and I thought, you know, obviously his kicking game, it's been big all year, but it really shined there against Dan River. Uh, two touchbacks and then the punts, you know, something that he hasn't had a chance to do much of because of your offense. He hasn't had a chance to punt much all year. And, boy, he was really booming them with that right leg of his. And the entire punt coverage unit was good, too. Wayne Shore in the long snaps, and it seemed like he was – down there every time as the ball was hitting the turf when Walker would hang him up high on the kicks. That's a great weapon for you guys. It is. You know, it's on, uh, you don't pay much attention to it in high school football, I think. Sometimes special teams gets overlooked. And with, with our punt team not, not being uh, used much this year and definitely in a, um, important in a big close game, that was, that was a big part of our defensive uh, success when you, can, when you could put that team a little further back on a field position. D-line stepped up and made some uh, great plays, and two guys especially I thought that played well were uh, Dante Poindexter and Trayvon Elliott. And, uh, you know, again, they got some penetration at times when you guys really needed it, and uh, it's pretty fun to watch one of those big guys get a solo tackle in the other team's backfield like that. Yeah, you, you, you hit it on the head there, Kyle. We got Kyle, uh, Dante uh, been, been nursing a, a bad shoulder, and he came out and, uh, and played lights out. Friday night, and then Trayvon, same thing. He's he's getting more comfortable. This is his second year with us, and uh, offensively and defensively, he's starting to, to make to become a defensive playmaker a little bit. Wrapping up the Subway pregame show here. It's on to Nelson this week, and you guys have to go on the road. You're coming off a big win. Uh, you had a bunch of rain earlier this week that probably affected your practice schedule. It seems like you throw all those things in the pot, and it's a recipe maybe for a letdown. Has that been uh, the primary job of you and the coaching staff this week is to avoid the letdown and say, hey, guys, we can't can't just roll our stuff out there on the field and expect to win. we got to play a football game. Now, to be honest with you, we haven't, we haven't touched on that too much. What we did this week, we actually had better practice this week with the rain than we had the previous week with the number of people out with injuries and all. Last week wasn't a good week of practice. Uh, this week we uh, we worked pretty good with the things that we need to improve on offensively. Nelson County is running a single wing offense, so we're working. Our, our, our defensive personnel needs to uh, understand how to line up to a number of their formations. It's an offense that's not uh, seen much around the area. William Campbell's running it, and, uh, and Nelson is this year, but uh, we, we, we hit those aspects this week. Is that going to be the primary key tonight, stop their single wing offense? And they've got some pretty capable ball carriers in the backfield. Is that uh, job number one and everything else takes care of itself after that? Yes, yeah, we've got to line up to their formation and we, we're, we're going to want to uh, force them outside. We want to pinch, pinch uh, the gaps as much as we can and make, uh, we, got more, we have more team speed than they do and, and, and force them to bounce plays outside and run them down. Colonels have used that speed to their advantage all year. Let's see if tonight is no exception. Colonels, Governors, kick off in about 15 minutes on 105.5 KD Country. Here's more specials from your area Apple Market convenience stores. 32-ounce fountain drink, only 89 cents. Large coffee and fresh baked donut or Miss Freshly snack cake, just $1.99. Dr. Pepper and Coke's 99 cents for the 2-liter size. An all-meat jumbo hot dog and 32-ounce drink. Get both for $1.99. At the Apple Market locations, Riverside, Gateway, and Main Street, Alta Vista. You know what they say, stop by the Apple today. Good food, low prices, and great service keep customers coming back for more day after day at El Cazador Mexican Restaurant in Alta Vista. El Cazador is now open all afternoon, so you can come by anytime, any day, 11 a.m. till 10 p.m. El Cazador Mexican Restaurant, a great place to unwind and relax with friends. Open seven days a week, Main Street, Alta Vista. El Cazador thanks you for your business. Stay cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Tyree Little's Heating and Cooling, on the ready to keep you comfortable year-round. Locally owned and operated.
operated just a call away with over 20 years experience. Licensed and bonded, Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling, specializing in heating, air, plumbing, and electrical, any season, any time. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling, keeping you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Give them a call today. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling, Gretna. Your station for high school sports play-by-play is 105.5 KD Country. Back here on the Subway pregame show from beautiful, as Oscar mentioned. And Oscar, we're discussing the uh, technology and going on the road, et cetera. It's always fun to come up here to Nelson County as we... A little, the Colonels, Nelson County, two and four this season. Coach Mark Post is the second. And we're talking to the athletic. Construction Company has been in the building business since 1909, so it's only natural that they appreciate the building process. They recognize the fact that organized sports programs build character as well as bodies and minds. They know that high school sports build our youth into more well-rounded and more productive adults. English Construction Company is proud to be a sponsor of high school sports and salute all athletes, coaches, and teachers. A word of praise and encouragement from English Construction Company with offices in Lynchburg. For more than 103 years, we've offered special banking assistance to many nonprofit organizations. I'm Kathy Morgan with First National Bank, and we have a checking account just for nonprofits and faith based organizations that has no minimum balance requirement and no monthly maintenance fee. We also specialize in offering financing when your group needs a loan. So come see us at First National Bank, and we'll provide your organization with an extraordinary customer experience. First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Our thanks to these members of the Katy Country Sports Club. El Cerrito and Alta Vista. Throw on a sombrero. Shake your maracas. It's El Cerrito time. Authentic Mexican cuisine only at El Cerrito. Robertson Auto Sales, Lynchburg. Dealers with a passion for great quality pre-owned vehicles. We love cars and trucks and it shows in our inventory. Aubrey Rosser, attorney at law, going above and beyond the courtroom. Your choice for any and all legal advice. Serving Alta Vista, Lynchburg, and Roanoke areas. One stop mark, Main Street, Alta Vista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken is kicking. Mad Biddy's Antiques, 105 Wood Lane, just off of Main Street. Come find what you didn't know you were looking for. Dairy Free, serving ice cream, yogurt, fries, hamburger, hot dogs, and fresh chili since 1961 from their Main Street location. Here's more award-winning high school sports with Kyle and Oscar on 105.5 KD Country. And back here once again on the Subway pregame show. Award-winning, although maybe not for these reasons, Oscar. Uh, bear with us, fans, as we weather some, some technical issues up here, but uh, we'll get through and the Colonels will be on. There's still about 10 minutes or so until kickoff, so uh, plenty of time for more Subway pregame show. Meatball Marinara, $5.00 footlong of the month, Oscar, and uh, let's get back into what we were talking about earlier. Nelson County, 2-4 and four this season, but they, they want to uh, maybe change the schedule up a little bit and give their, give their guys a chance to be more competitive in the years coming up. And you alluded to the fact that we had a pretty nice conversation with Athletic Director Billy Lee here before the game. Talked to him for about 20 and 30 minutes, and uh, they're going to employ a strategy here very similar to what Alta Vista did in the early 2000s, and they're not going to play a, a heavy district schedule. Uh, they're going to take some of the teams out and uh, play a little bit weaker schedule. Uh, we'll step away as for a commercial break here. You're listening to 105.5 WKDE. 
Tonight's game is brought to you by Perkins Tire and Auto Service in Chatham. And we do mean service because Perkins Tire will pick up and deliver your vehicle. Call Perkins Tire in Chatham, 434-432-1100, 432-1100. Whether you need brand name tires or service, call Calvin, Stanley, or Frankie at Perkins Tire and Service Center on Highway 29 in Tight Squeeze, just south of Chatham. Perkins Tire and Service Center, your authorized Michelin tire dealer. Apple Auto Glass is your windshield repair and replacement center in Lynchburg. You get a free car wash with all windshields replaced in the shop. Apple Auto Glass wants the fans to enjoy the boys of fall this high school football season. When I feel that chill, smell that fresh cut grass. I'm back in my helmet, cleats and shoulder pads. Where the boys of fall. Apple Auto Glass salutes the boys of fall. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I have some bad news. How bad is it, doctor? We've done all we can. Your heat pump's not gonna make it. Oh, no. <laughs> Honey, it's gonna be okay. We'll call Select Air Mechanical and Electrical, 332-2600. With over 60 years' experience, they'll have us comfortable again in no time. I recommend Select Air to all my patients. Call 332-2600 or visit SelectAirMechanical.com. They can handle all your home comfort needs, and they're an authorized trained dealer. It's hard to stop a train. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. Over 52 years of award-winning high school sports coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Colonel's getting set to tee it off here in Nelson County against the governors and Oscar. It seems like we, uh, we've we tried to get in this conversation three or four times now about Nelson County, and we've been interrupted each time, but... Uh, Again, you know, we talked about it. the governor's Mark Poston came in here last year and he had high hopes. He still has high hopes, but um, you know, it's getting really tough for the governors to compete in uh, what used to be the Dogwood District, um, playing the schools, and not to mention the fact that they're the most northern team uh, in the district or what's left of the old Dogwood District anyway. So it does make sense for them to uh, to change the scheduling and tweak it a bit. Well, it does because we were talking some numbers with, with Billy Leg and, and he said that when you know, the season started, I think 23 was the number that he had grown out with kids, and they don't even have enough. They didn't have enough to have a varsity and a JV program. They pulled all those kids up. They're all playing at the varsity level to give them enough numbers, and they, they put their JV program on hold for now. They do have a middle school team or a B team, as you have it. Uh, so they're trying to do a very similar strategy with Alpha did back in 2002 and 2003 and rebuild that program. They don't have a youth program here that feeds the high school. That's an issue for them as well. So uh, they're doing some right things. Coach Poston, again, the two and four. They've made an investment here. Uh, the field is, is, is it's a new turf field. Uh, it looks like it's Bermuda overseeded. It looks it's a beautiful field. Mm-hmm. We were down earlier. Yep. Uh, it's going to be one of the, I would say it's probably one of the better fields in the, in the old dogwood, even right now. Another year up when it matures, it's going to be fabulous. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right. So it's a good place to play. Nelson County, again, always a good place to show up to and have a good time. The community supports them, and you're right. They're doing some of those things that, uh, that uh, you know, Colonel fans that remember the Alta Vista team had to do years ago. And you can obviously see how it's worked out for the Colonels. Now, there's some other factors in there, too. you got to have players, et cetera. But uh, I think Nelson County headed in the right direction. Tonight was going to be tricky for Alta Vista as the governors are running the old single wing offense, which is, uh, again, not something you see a whole lot of, although I would argue it's making a bit of a resurgence. William Campbell's running the single wing. Of course, area football fans know that Giles has run the single wing for a long, long time. You'll see some other schools dabble with it occasionally, and that's uh, sort of what's happening now in Nelson County. It is tough to defend, and we'll talk maybe a little bit more about why as we uh, get on with the show here. Well, if it's going to do the single wing, you could make an argument that, that when you go into the shotgun or, or to the pistol, that it's a very similar sure. strategy. So uh, not that big a difference. Uh, but when you talk about Nelson County, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about uh, their, uh, their main guy that you'll see carry the ball tonight, I would assume, is going to be Ray Chambers. Uh, Ray is right at 600 yards for the season, so you can see he's averaging right at 100 yards a game. He did have a big game against Fardre. Uh, I think that's the game he has one season. Seven, Kyle. So uh, he's capable on 24 carries. So he's very capable of, of running the ball and running it well for this Nelson County team. Yeah, Chambers is going to be the main weapon for them tonight. And uh, most of the pregame.
pregame festivities done here on the Subway pregame show is the, uh, the press box here in Nelson, just bustling with activity. It's all sorts of things going on. But uh, good time as the optimistic coaching staff is making their way up top. And, uh, you know, for the Colonels, you heard me talk to Coach Sharnas about it in the pregame interview. He said even with the weather and those sorts of uh, strange things, they actually had a better week of practice this week than we did last week. Uh, just because some guys are healthier, and I think you're still concerned somewhat with the injuries, Oscar, and you would hope to be able to get some of those guys out a little bit early tonight. Maybe your starters can play a half, but you can't bank on that. You could never, you know, plan for that. That's just the luxury you hope to have. And, and I think the key word is injuries, and, and for the most part, you're not really dealing with injuries for the Colonels. A lot of the kids are nicked up, little mm-hmm. nagging things, nothing that would prohibit any of them from, from playing any amount of time, you know, in a critical ball game. Yeah, you know, he, uh, Coach Sharnas told me off the air that Michi Ballback feeling as good as he has in about a month. Same, same thing with Dante Poindexter. They talked about Dante, that great game he had against Dan River. Oscar was uh, doing large parts that he was just feeling better, felt like he was healthier and moving, hitting on all cylinders again. And we feel like we, uh, we're close to hitting on all cylinders, Oscar. We may not quite be there, but we're, uh, we're using – a whole bunch of them. Captains are coming out tonight for both teams, and while they do that, let's tell you, our captains, the people that make our broadcast possible, El Cazador, a great place for family and friends to dine. Bellers, a short drive, will save you money. Of course, they sponsor our YouTube rebroadcast. Go listen to the Colonels on demand wherever you want at the KD Country YouTube page. Tyree Littles, heating and cooling, keeping you cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and of course, comfortable in between. Apple Markets, listen to the weekly specials all game long at all your area Apple Markets. English, so much more than a hardware store. Highview Motors, from small to tall, Highview has it all. Apple Auto Glass, and free car wash, we have a new windshield installed. Perkins Twin Tire and Auto Service, Highway 29 in Chatham, free pickup and delivery. Select Air, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Hard to stop a train, Oscar. And the First National Bank focused, uh, excuse me, dedicated to bringing you extraordinary customer service. And they certainly do that. Also, how could we forget Finch and Finch, a family serving family since 1905? I saw Rob Finch as I was leaving Subway today, so how could I forget Finch and Finch? Uh, some of the best people you'll ever meet. They've been a supporter of ours and the Optimistic Colonels for a long time. Of course, if you're listening online at jdcountry.com or with the TuneIn app, you can thank Chris Owen. You're all state agents in Lynchburg for that. The Colonels back there in the left end zone gathering, huddled up, ready to bust out through one of their paper signs. You see pretty much everybody run through. Those used to be a little novelty, those signs that the cheerleaders would make Oscar, but now it seems like there's like six or seven of them each week. Yeah, and we'd be remiss too in mentioning it and not mentioning uh, that. Scott L. Moon's back in the lineup yep. tonight. Uh, i got to believe that Scott L. Scott L. set out two games for uh, VHSL rules. And, uh, i got to believe that you're going to see a fired up Scott L. Moon tonight. And I've got to believe that, that with this fresh leg, you'll see him get a ton of carries tonight as well. Well, that's a nice point. You know, Clyde has missed the last two ball games. And uh, you're right. He is a, an enthusiastic young man. So if he's been... Uh, Having to sit out for a little while, I have a feeling he's going to want to make up for lost time. You're right, he should come out and uh, probably, I would think, do his best to put on a show tonight. Offensively and defensively, of course, Clyde, an outstanding linebacker for the Optimistic Colonels, very good running back as well. Nelson's going to receive, and uh, Walker Allen, who, wow, maybe it's time to revisit the great game he had last week, Oscar. It's, uh, it seems like it's always Walker Allen time, and it seems like he's Oh, it's getting better and better. Well, he is, and I, I, I talked to his dad before this game, about 15 minutes before we came on the air, and he was smiling from ear to ear, very pleased. Walker did have a great game last week. Uh, he's been he's been solid with his extra points and, the, and a couple of field goals he's had. The thing we haven't seen out of him, because quite frankly, the Colonels haven't had to punt that much. Right. But, uh, boy, he a little shaky on his first punt last week, but after that, he was booming 43 yards, 55 yards, 48 yards, all with no return. So, I mean, what a weapon. Yeah, we saw Alphabet get to a penalty situation where they lost 20 yards. They had third and fourth and 28. And 
quite frankly, we thought Henry was going to flip the field and have the ball inside the Colonel territory, but that's when Walker boomed one of those 48 yards with no return and uh, really just flipped the field on down River. Yeah, it seems like when the pressure is at its highest, that's when Walker is at its best. And number 89 is going to take the run up here for the opposite to Colonel to get the game started. Here's the boot. It's a high, and it's not going to reach the end zone. It's going to be field goal about the 10 yard line by Taylor. Taylor's going to start up the left seam, hit hard once around the uh, shoulder pads, then hit hard a second time around the thigh pad there. Good shot. It was Clyde L. Moon doing the damage. That was actually Carlos Rodriguez on the return for Nelson County. Governors will start with decent field position when you're talking about walk around. Looks like it's the 24 yard line, and as we look out there, Oscar, the yard line. Not exactly easy to see. There's a little bit of a glare. And then, of course, the new turf out there has got a lot to do with it as well. You mentioned Claudel. Claudel was the first one downfield to make contact with him. He slipped out of Claudel's grasp. But Claudel was also got back that 15 yards upfield and got a hold of him. Yeah. Got better snap this one from the left hash mark, wide side of the field, the right side. Chambers wants to run that way. He stopped after a short game. Single wing formation, usually the unbalanced side of the line is to the right. Usually it's just two guys on the left side of the center, Oscar, and then everybody else is to the right side. So you can imagine the single wing teams do like to run to the right primarily, but uh, they'll go to the left as a counter reverse sort of play, and they can throw the ball out of that formation too. They can, but you will not, you won't see a lot of formations out of Nelson County where they have a split out. Exactly right. Most everybody's packed in there, tight end in the wing. Chambers going to go right side again. Turns up. He's got some room. He's back. Close to the defense. He's going to try and take it to the end zone. Right sideline. Nelson Dew is going to try and run it down. He does. Finally wrestles into the ground at the other 20-yard line. Wow. Big game there for Nelson County and Ray Chambers as he busts out early from the single wing offense. Boy, we talked about Chambers and what a threat he was, and, and I didn't realize Chambers had the kind of speed he did. The only reason Nelson Dews caught him was because he had the angle. Nice play. They overloaded that right side, blew a big hole in the Colonel's defense, and Chambers was off the race. And again, with this single wing offense, there's two backs in the backfield split. Either one of them can get the snap. The two guys back there right now are Chambers and Carlos Rodriguez. Here it comes again. This time they'll snap to Rodriguez. He goes five up the middle, and I'll put it in there. Shut down Destin Brown, first man on the stop. It looks like Devontae Clark was in there as well. Clyde L. Moon coming in behind him. A little bit of a misdirection play, but the Colonel snuffed it out. No gain. Brings up second and ten. Boy, good to see Devontae. Devontae really lays the leather on that hit. Nice stop by the Colonels. Brings up second and ten. Ten twenty-nine remaining here in the first quarter. No score. Nelson County Governors have run three plays. Two of them have been little or no gain, but one of them was a very big game from Ray Chambers. Same formation, unbalanced line to the right. Here comes the direct snap. It goes to Chambers. It was a little high, and a flag comes out. Play will be blown dead. Looks like a legal procedure on Nelson County, so this will back them up and make it second to 15. Well, Oscar, Colonel's defense has been doing the bend but don't break thing a lot this year. Let's see if they can do it again. The penalty should certainly help. They haven't had a lot of plays that were busted for that kind of distance against them either. Uh, you look at Prince Edwards, they did, but other than that, nobody's had that kind of distance of a break, about a 60-yard run, I don't think we've had one. I think it might be officially right around 58 yards, but you're right. That that probably is the longest play that's gone against the Colonel defense this year. There was that one long pass play, but I don't think that was over 50 yards against Galax. Direct snap to Chambers again. He's going to follow a lead block to the right, trying to turn the corner. Can he? He finally gets run out of bounds. He never really got it going north to south, but he did pick up some solid yardage on the play. Let's see where they move the stick to. They're going to give Donovan Montague credit for flushing him out of bounds there. Demetrius Johnson was in the area code as well. It's, it's still, uh, they, gave, they gave the yard on that play, Kyle, so it'll spring up third at about 14. He kept stringing it out to the sideline and kept going. And again, never really could square the shoulders and get going and downfield. Third and 14 on the way. 9.42 remaining here in the Apple Market. First quarter still 0-0 our score. Nelson County football. They'll snap at the Chambers. Chambers going to follow a pulling guard up the middle. Nothing there as he is shut down after a small gain, maybe one or two yards at most. This will bring up fourth down. I would imagine Nelson County is going to go for it in plus field territory here, Oscar. Sure they were. Trayvon Elliott was the one that got, that got through and busted up that play and, and grabbed Chambers. So, uh, yeah, fourth and 13. You're, you're two and four. Uh, you're at the 20, was it 23-yard line? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
You're absolutely right. The front one's doing a good job of here. Yeah, again, yard lines are really hard to see out here for us, but we'll do our best. Here comes same formation. They do have a split out this time. Chambers was the lone back. He wants to throw. He's going to throw. He's got man complete. Short the first down marker. Great stop right there by Michi Malbeck. He's going to stop him short out of this football after the turnover on downs. Wow, excellent pass play from Ray Chambers. He completes the pass to the receiver, but Michi Malbeck right there in close coverage and then brought him down for little to no gain after the catch. That's something to watch because that play pulls the Colonel's blitz in on that play. Dustin came from the outside, shifts it outside to the left side and blitz, and it, it pulls the Colonel's. Good play calling there from Coach Post and good execution by Nelson County. Out to this, who is just one better than they're going to hand it off to Michi Mall back on the wide receiver sweep. He's headed outside. He's across the 25. He's across the 30 now. Mall back still on his feet, driving ahead. Finally stopped about the 31. Did he pick up there? Nice job by Demetrius Johnson out on the edge block. And then he had his player tied up. Michi could decide whether he was going to go outside or cut back inside. He, a little bit of hesitation there. If he did cut back inside immediately, it would have been difficult to bring down. Yeah, Michi was trying to read that block, and he did read it successfully. You're right, just took an extra second there. Thornhill wants to throw on first down, rolling out to his left, sets his feet, throwing over to the left side. Michi Malbec catches on the 45-yard line, complete for a long pass play. 20-yard pickup, Thornhill to Malbec, as Michi is dragged to the ground after the catch there. Another first down. Two first downs on two plays so far for the Colonel's Oscar. Still no score here from Nelson County. And you can't give Juan Thornhill that kind of time on a little rollout to give that time of, kind of time to throw the ball. He's gonna, this, these wide receivers will pick you apart. Juan set his feet, really threw a nice strike to Malbec. Juan wants to pass again. He's going out to the right side. Complete to Demetrius Johnson on the 40. Johnson's stiff arm. He's across the 30. Now the 25. He's across the 20. Still on his feet. Just shedding guys off of him like they're flies. And now he'll get dragged down by a whole convoy of Nelson County tacklers. Boy, Demetrius Johnson showing off some nice moves and using that stiff arm to his advantage over there on the right sideline. A lot of the teams in the... In now during the offseason are playing seven on seven. That was one on seven. He got out there on his own, and he had no blocking. Uh, again, the, the flow of the play went to the left, that little wide out uh, quick pass, and he was on his own, but he did a great job of losing uh, the Nelson County defenders and matriculating the ball down. So he did just that. First down for the Optimistic Colonels, and Nelson County wants to take a timeout. We'll take a quick corner as well. No score here. 802 left to play. Altavista taking on the Nelson County Governors on 105.5 KD Country. For a storm door that offers style and convenience, come to English's Building Supply in Alta Vista for a Pella self-storing storm door. These doors feature screens that are always there when you need them. And Pella's self-storing storm doors are backed by Pella's lifetime storm door protection plan. Come by English's Building Supply. See the full line of Pella storm doors. English's. English's is your complete home center. Got a $15 mail-in rebate during October. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. First and 10 on the way for the Alta Vista Colonels from the 15-yard line right hash mark. Juan Thornhill looking over the Nelson County defense. Still no score here. They'll put them all back in motion. Juan wants to run. Big hole up the middle. Juan cuts ahead. Dives across about the 7 or 8-yard line. Might have got it to the 5. No, they'll spot it on the 7. Good hard running up the middle. For Juan Thornhill on first down, it'll bring up second and two. Nice job on that left side of that Colonel line, opening that hole for Juan. Juan's going to get the offense straight again. This time, football's in the middle of the field, as I mentioned, from about the seven-yard line. 0-0 zero, zero is our score. 7.35 remaining in the Apple Market first quarter. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Juan has Destin Brown in the backfield with him. They put Maul back in motion and it to Destin Brown. No, Brown got ahead of steam up the middle. Oh, is your shoulder into the end zone for a touchdown? The Optimistic Colonels strike first. They're up 6 nothing on the seven-yard touchdown jaunt from Destin Brown. No flag on the play. Nice job by Destin. Had a couple of opportunities for Nelson to bring him down. As we've seen, Destin continued to turn his legs and was able to get to the end zone. And Destin ran through. Multiple tacklers there, although the blocking up front was certainly good from the Alta Vista Colonel's offensive line. Destin didn't have to work real, real hard. Juan Thornhill on the hold for Walker Allen on the extra point. Pass back to Juan is good. Juan gets it on the block, and the kick looks to be right down Broad Street. It is. Great job there by the Alta Vista Colonel's special team again. Walker Allen makes another, and the Alta Vista Colonel's lead 
seven nothing after a touchdown run from Destin Brown. Time out here, seven twenty three remaining in the first quarter on one oh five five KD Country. In the past century, our community has grown, and Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service has grown too, alongside the families they've known for so long. Finch and Finch is proud to have served you over one hundred years. A family business, Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service, dedicated to your service. Finch and Finch Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Destin Brown gets the out to this. The Colonels on the board first. They lead 7-0 after the touchdown run in the Walker Allen PAT. Oscar, this is a, a little bit more like what we're used to, certainly from the out to this offense anyway. Four running plays, two pass plays. 7.23 remaining in the first quarter. Colonels lead 7-0. And then... Nice job by Destin on that run. One of the more methodical drives that the Colonels have had. Yeah, you're right. Uh, sometimes the optimistic the Colonel offense will score on the first play or the second play, but that time they did really march it down the field. You're right. They used good balance, running plays, passing plays. Mark Thornhill looked comfortable in the pocket, making some strong throws. He's two for two in the air. And the offensive line uh, did their job as well. Walker Allen on to kick off now, second time. This evening, he has done so. Return guys look like number seven, Carlos Rodriguez, and number three, Devontae Ellis Rose, back deep for the Nelson County Governor. 7.23 left to play here in the Apple Market first quarter. Colonels sporting a 7 nothing lead. This ball is booted back by Walker Allen. Caught on the one-yard line. I thought he might have been in the end zone option, but Ellis Rose will take the return up the middle. Not a whole lot there. He got it past the 10, maybe to about the 12 or the 13. One colonel a little slow to get up there. It looks like the first guy on the spot. It looks like number 12, Jamal Thornhill, but he hops to his feet and jogs off. Nice play by the colonel's special teams. It was Jamal Thornhill. And, uh, that ball, uh, I'm going to agree, we're a little bit difficult angle, and, and they're correcting him. Like they're correcting it now. He was two yards deep in the end zone when he yeah. caught it and ran it out. You can't do that. Right. It's a dead ball situation. It should be 720. Seven twenty-three left on the clock, and it is a touchback yeah. in high school football. Yeah, they are calling it a touchback, and they will start on the twenty-yard line. So better field position for Nelson County. Uh, normally, the play is just blown dead immediately in high school. You don't have the option of taking it out of the end zone, unlike college and professional football. And that's what they're explaining, yeah. Coach uh, Sean the Tampa. Good, uh, nice job of officiating there. Colonel's defense, uh, Nelson did a nice job of moving the ball in that first drive. And the Colonel's, this is the first time they've seen the single wing this year. Coach Revs is going to have to make some adjustments. And we mentioned the single wing offense is difficult to prepare for. It's difficult to defend. Chambers will take the direct snap, take it himself again. Good aim to the right side of that line. Dropped down there by Demetrius Johnson. Also, it looked like Darius Johnson on the play as well. Trayvon Elliott was there to... Solid six and a half, seven yard pick up there on first down for Chambers. It'll bring up second and four. And it's it's difficult to pick pick up the ball carrier in, in this single wing. Well, and that's the other thing the single wing offense features, Oscar, is normally those offensive linemen are foot to foot, shoulder to shoulder. It's hard to see in the backfield and know who has that football and where they're going sometimes. Second and four on the way for the Nelson County Governor. Chambers will take it again. Same play. Right side off tackle. Left there this time, although he did gain some yardage before he's cut down with a thigh-high tackle from what looked like Clyde Elmer. Dante Poindexter in that area as well for the Colonels. Bring up third and short. It'll be about two yards for the first down. And um, again, direct snap back to Chambers. Difficult to pick him up from if you're in, if you're a Colonel defender. It is, and that's uh, part of the problem is you get caught looking in the backfield, and before you know you get blocked by one of those linemen, or sometimes two or three of those linemen. They're so closely together, they can really execute those double teams block successfully. They'll put a man in motion behind, snap goes to the direct man, and that's right up the middle. They are short of the first down marker, I believe, although one official has a spot that would give them a first down. It looks like they have signaled first down. Good enough there for the governors to pick up the first down. It looked like Rodriguez on the carry, but again, sometimes it's hard to know where that ball is going. They're doing a lot of running behind 
number 76, Tyler Baker, 62, 300 pounds. That's the kind of guy I want to run behind for sure. And again, with those linemen so close together, the double team blocks and the wedge blocking is back in play. It's old school football when you're talking about the single wing here. First and 10 from the 30-yard line for Nelson County. They're going to run the reverse and take everybody to the left side. Rodriguez doesn't have a lot of room there. He has dropped a solo tackle by number two, Clyde L. Moon, for the Alta Vista Colonels. One yard at most for Nelson County. They're actually going to back him up a little bit. Might have lost one. And we talked about Clyde L. making that hit on the opening kickoff. He, he was a little shaken up, and he's coming off the field now, shaking up again after that stop. He did a great job of diagnosing that reverse. And, uh, but he's off the field. He's hurt. Yep, Wayne Short checking in the ball game on that right side. He's got Devontae Clark beside him as a linebacker over there on the right side. They're going up the middle again. First hit didn't bring the running back down. Second one does. That's Darius Johnson that will drag him to the turf. And again, we talked about running behind number 76, Tyler Baker. And lining up to it next to him is Bryce Atkins, 6'2", 300 pounds. Those two kids are... Uh, are doing a nice job blowing off that Colonel line. Yeah, that's so 600 pounds there in the driver and the passenger seat. Uh, and that's a lot coming at you if you're a Colonel defensive lineman. Third and six on the way here from the 35-yard line. Ellis Rowe is going to take the run to the right side. Not much there. Colonel string it out, and they stop him for no gain. Team tackle that time for Alta Vista. They just had... A bunch of bodies over there will bring up a punting situation for Nelson County. And we continue to see it's in the MO all year. People run it out to us to run it out to us. If you run outside, run inside the tackles, you can make a little bit of a progress. You've got to be very patient. If you try to go outside and sweep on them, there's just too much team speed, too much pursuit to be able to turn that corner. Absolutely right. The Colonel's defensive speed is very, very good. Punting situation now for Nelson County. 3.42 remaining in the Apple Market first quarter. 7 nothing is your Colonel lead. Alta Vista looking to get the ball back here on fourth down. Snap is a little high, and whistles come out. Flags go down. Probably going to be procedure on Nelson County, although if it went against Alta Vista, it might be close to that first down marker. It is off the high on Alta Vista. It's not going to be quite enough for a first down, I don't think, but it's going to be enough to make Coach Post think about it. It's going to bring up fourth and inches, I believe. It's less than a it's, – it's, it's about half a yard, and if I'm Coach Post and – I regroup. Yeah. They're huh? going to call out for a call. Yeah. But the officials are going to stop and think about this. They may even bring out the chain and measure. It's given Coach Postman a chance to think about a play call and decide whether he wants to go for it or not. He's shuffling personnel after he hears some yep. big boys. He's bringing the Atkins back in. He's bringing Baker back in. So uh, they've had success running the ball. Up the middle, that's what they're going to, I would imagine that's what they're going to do now, but it's fourth down, they're going for it. Yep. And it's a right call, it's two and four, hey, nothing to lose. I think you're exactly right. They trail 7 nothing right now due to Nelson County Governors. If they could pick this up, it would give them some momentum. And they are in Alta Vista field territory, but the ball is resting on the 40, so it's not like they're giving Alta Vista just a chip shot into the end zone if they don't get it. So I think it's the right call here. We'll see if it ends up working out for the Governors or not. Looks like Chambers is the only setback this time. Everybody packed on that line of scrimmage right here for Nelson County. Snap goes to Chambers. He takes it right up the middle. Looks like he's got enough for a first down. Big fourth down conversion there for Nelson County. Keeps the chains moving. Juan Thornhill came in there and finished him off from the safety spot. But he picked up more than enough to move the sticks, Oscar. And, and that's another recipe for success against the Colonels. Pound the ball, pound the ball, pound the ball. Keep that offense from the Colonels yeah. off the field. That's exactly right. It gets back to the old ball control offense. If you have the football, the other team doesn't, and they should have a hard time scoring, although the Colonels' defense has a, thrown a wrench in that theory from time to time because they do like to score on their own. First and 10 for Nelson County. 245 left to play. Colonels lead 7 up. Snap goes to Chambers. Short gain up the middle there as he is tackled by Dante Poindexter. Clydell Moon back in the game, Oscar, so that's good to see. He's in on the stop along with Trayvon Elliott. They say he got two yards on the pickup. 2.30 remaining here in the first quarter. Colonels lead 7 to nothing. Second, we'll call it 8. Colonels have only touched the ball one time. So, again, great strategy by Coach Post. Pound it, pound it, keep the ball away from the Colonels. Uh, it's worked. It is working so far. Chambers in the backfield again. It looks like he's got Ellis Rose beside him there. Nelson 
the governor's on the far side hash mark. Wide side of the field is the left side. Chambers wants to run to the short side. He's got a small gain again. Up ended over there in front of the Alpha Vista Colonel Pinch. Again, a one or two yard pickup. Far side of the field is hard for us to see who made the stop. It looked like Devontae Clark and Juan Thornhill were over there in the area. Looks like Nietzsche Ballback got off of that pile as well. Bring up about third and call it seven, Kyle. Colonels need to stay home and not get off side. Well, great point. Need to stay home, stay on their side of the football before the ball is snapped. And then you got to watch that reverse, that counter that these single wing teams will run back to the left. You notice 90% of what they've run so far tonight has gone to the right side. Let's see where this third and seven play goes. Going to go up the middle this time. Some misdirection, not a whole lot there. Colonel D did stay home. It was Darius Johnson on the stop there. Although it certainly got it close here. It's fourth and four and a half or maybe five. Coach Post and thought about it. I think he's going to send out the punting team again. And once again, I agree with Coach Post. Not that he's playing for me, but <laughs> trying to prove my call. But uh, you give the Colonels a short field, and we've seen that happen several times this year. And every time... Uh, the opposing team has paid for it. Yep, under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Colonel Zoo leads 7 0. Beach him all back. Needs to return. He's standing on about the 21 yard line. Story Hill going to show a blitz on the punch block, but he didn't get there. They kicked away. Mall back. Oh, he almost mishandled. He's fielded on the short hop. One hop. Now he's got a chance to make a big return. Take it all the way to the right side. Hesitation move from Michi. He's across the 35, across the 40. Falls over and out of bounds around the 44 yard line. Nice return from Michi Mall back. And it started a little bit scary there for Colonel Van. He, he did a, he's been a great shortstop on that play. Yeah. It was an absolute shortstop. Colonels are sending. For the most part, he's sending seven, eight guys in to try to block the punt and leaves Michi kind of on his own on the return. He did a great job then cutting the cross field and picking up about 25 yards on that return. Donovan Montague throwed a nice block there. He was about the only one back there that actually was blocking. You're right. Everybody else seemed like they were going after the punt block itself. Juan Thornhill's going to put Michi Mall back in motion. They're going to give it to Clyde L. Moon. Moon assist his way through the D-line. They're not a whole lot available to Clyde. And now the football may have come out. Nelson County signaling that they have it. The referee is signaling that they have it. Fumble, turnover, and this will give the governors the football back. Oscar, they've got it in their own field territory on the 45-yard line. Big play right there. 24.9 seconds left in the first quarter. Boy, they, Cardell ran into a scrum. There were three or four governors there. Uh, they just started to fall backwards. Somebody stripped the ball and knocked it away. Nice job by Nelson going after the ball. First and ten from the Colonels, 45, 24 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Colonels lead 7 nothing. Governors trail, but they're playing inspired football right now. Football is loose again. This time it's on the ground. Let's see who got it back out to this. It could not recover it. Nelson County falls on it. Boy, Claudio Moon was exploded in the backfield. He read that play, interrupted, and he almost single-handedly got the ball back that he had just fumbled away. Man, that's going to be the last play of the quarter. First quarter comes to a close with some exciting football here. Alta Vista does lead. It hasn't been pretty, though. They're up 7 nothing over Nelson County. Second quarter on the way when you come back on 105.5 KD Country. Back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. KD Country and Subways of Alta Vista are giving you a chance to win with Subway. Just making sure you like KD Country on Facebook. We'll give you the code word here during the Subway halftime or post-game show. And if you're the first one to post it to the KD Country Facebook page, you'll have a chance to win a foot-long meal deal. Oscar foot-long meal deal sounds pretty good right now. I know the Colonel's are hungry, but boy, it seems like these governors are just as hungry or perhaps more so early in this football game. Nice, absolutely they are. Nice job by Coach Poston. Great game plan, controlling the ball. Colonels have, have only ran seven offensive plays in that first quarter. Uh, 
uh, that's got to be a recipe for success against Alabama. You have to keep that offense off the field. It is governor's football. Second and 15 on the way. They almost fumbled it right back to Alphavis as the quarter ended there. They're going to snap this one from the 48-yard line, middle of the field. Running right is Chambers. He's going to cut it back up the middle. There's a little bit of room there, but he's dropped. Trayvon Elliott got him around the legs again. And then a couple guys got him up high. Devontae Clark and Darius Johnson there to combine for the stop. For the Colonel's defense, it's going to bring up third and 13 for Nelson County. Looks like the Colonels are starting to adjust to that single wing, starting to see the gaps and, and the blocking scheme. Not not a better defensive coordinator in the area that can make adjustments on the fly than Coach Travis Rouse. I would agree. He's got a great game plan every game it comes in, every game they come into it seems like, and he does make those adjustments on the fly as well as anybody. Chambers in the backfield to put a man in motion. They'll fake it to him and give it to Rodriguez. He's got nothing there. Excuse me, Dre Taylor. He has dropped Dante Poindexter. Clydell Moon, Darius Johnson did not fall for the play fake there as they dropped Taylor in the backfield for no gain. Yeah, a lot of the single wing stuff, you see a lot of spot of hand and some ball handling skills, which, let's face it, Nelson's done a good job with that, but that was supposed to sniff that one out and uh, stop that play before it had any chance to Governors look like they're going to punt it away again here on 4th and 13. 10.44 remaining in the Apple Market second quarter. Alta Vista leading 7 nothing. And remember, three great locations in Alta Vista there. Main Street, Gateway, and Riverside. I think gas, what, around 275 or something. Snap is low. It's mishandled by the punter. He's going to try and kick it away. He does. He did get it away and didn't take a big loss of yards. Ball goes out of bounds around the 42. Cameron Vaughn. Had the ball go between his legs, Oscar. He had to run it down. He picked it up, turned to his right, and he managed to kick it away and save the governors about 15 or 20 yards. So good play by Vaughn. About the best he could do considering the circumstances. He, he picked the ball up at about the 20 or 18-yard line. Trayvon Elliott absolutely bearing down on him. And what a great play that was if you're a Nelson County fan uh, to be able to turn and punch that ball and get it to, to the 20 yards downfield. Colonels have got good field position. Let's see if they can hang on to the football. Nelson County wants to call another timeout to discuss some personnel changes. We'll take the timeout with them. 10-24 remaining in the half. Colonels lead 7-0 on 105.5 KD Country. There's always something special at your area Apple Markets. This month, enjoy delicious pumpkin spice coffee, cappuccino, and lattes for a limited time only. Hurry into an Apple Market and get a free Monster Energy poster with the purchase of two Monster Energy products. Five-hour energy drinks are now two for $5, and Nestle Pure Life Water, 20 back, just $3.99. At Apple Markets, Riverside, Gateway, and Main Street, Alta Vista. Stop by an Apple today. You're home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. 7 nothing is your Colonel lead here on the road at Nelson County, second quarter. Well, a couple minutes has gone by, 10-24. Of course, some Colonel fans, if they're just tuning in, you might be wondering, wow, Alpha Vista hasn't scored more. No, we've had a very good ball game up to this point. Alpha Vista is going to feature two wide receivers to the short side of the field. The left here, one split out wide to the right. Tight end right as well. They'll give it to Clyde Moon. He's going to go behind that tight end. Now cuts it back in the middle. He's trying to run his way through some traffic. Finally run down, first down yardage, though, for Clyde. Good pick up there on the first down running play for the Alta Vista Colonel. Nice job blocking downfield, and even better job for Kyle when he got in traffic. He pulled, pulled that left arm over and wrapped the ball up to make sure that it didn't have to spin from him again. Yeah, he's giving away one fumble here tonight. Of course, Destin Brown had a fumble last week that could have ended up earning the Colonels, but it didn't. Clyde will shift over to the left side of Juan Thornhill. Thornhill directing some traffic. Now waiting for the snap here on first and ten. He catches it in his chest, wants to throw, throws right. Lobbing it over the top for Donovan. Mind you, almost intercepted, boy. Ball falls harmlessly to the turf. Donovan had a chance to make the catch, and then number 54, Corey Mays, had a chance to make the interception. Nice touch pass that Juan tried to throw, and it was a touch pass. The, 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 the corner over on the right-hand side had started to close. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, Donovan against that inside linebacker, which is a matchup that you'll take day in and day out. But great job by Nelson. Busting up that pass play. Yeah, Donovan got his hands on the high floating pass, and then Mays sort of knocked it out of his hands, and then he tried to 
grab it and reel it in, but could not. Still, exciting football play to watch here. It'll bring up second and ten. Thornhill's going to bark the snap count. Now running to his right. Looks like a design running play. Juan's going to turn it up. Right sideline. He's crossed the first down marker. The ten, the five. Come back inside for a touchdown. Juan Thornhill showcasing the moves again. A great vision to cut it back right at the end there. An Oscar. Not only great vision, but he showed his elusiveness there. I don't know that anybody even touched him. That would have been a flag football game. I don't think anybody would have gotten his flag on 31-yard rushing touchdown for Juan Thornhill. He takes the quarterback sweep out to the right there. Good blocking, and then even outran a lot of his blockers there. But like you said, cut it back inside. Nobody from Nelson County making any serious charges at Juan. And 13 nothing is your score now for the Alta Vista Colonels. Juan on to hold for walk around. And his extra point score came at 944 to go here in the Apple Market second quarter. Snap a little low. Thornhill got it to the block. Walker out, hit it off the upright, and in. They say it's good. That football was bouncing around everywhere, Oscar. Kick is good. Colonels lead 14 nothing. Timeout with 944 remaining here in the half on 105.5 KD Country. Good food, low prices, and great service keep customers coming back for more day after day at El Cazador Mexican Restaurant in Alta Vista. El Cazador is now open all afternoon, so you can come by anytime, any day, 11 a.m. till 10 p.m. El Cazador Mexican Restaurant, a great place to unwind and relax with friends. Open seven days a week, Main Street, Alta Vista. El Cazador thanks you for your business. Your station for high school sports play-by-play is 105.5 KD Colonel Country. stretching the lead out 14-0 after another vintage Juan Thornhill rushing touchdown from 31 yards out. He made a beeline for that right sideline, turned it up inside, some nice blocking, some nice moves, and of course, the vision, the elusiveness, it was all there on that run for Juan Thornhill, and then the bouncing ball off the uprights there as uh, Walker Allen converts his second kick of the game. Colonel's lead 14-0, Oscar. Boy, that was a nice run by Juan. And uh, the extra point, he almost hit that. The goalpost was still shaking mm-hmm. when he hit it. Uh, it banged it way up off, probably within two feet of the top of that goalpost. Ricocheted off to the right, but it did go through. So uh, nice job there by Walker as well. Well, somebody needs to tell Walker those goalposts have feelings, too. That's just a joke. He did kick it hard. It hit off of that upright hard. You give Thornhill a lot of credit for getting the low snap to the kicking block for Walker. This kick going to land a little short of the end zone. Feel all about the two-yard line by Rodriguez. He takes it up the middle, and he is dropped by the Alta Vista Colonel's kick coverage unit. Got it back to about the 20-yard line, in fact, so it works out like a touchback for Walker Allen. Justin Brown, the first one down uh, to turn that play back inside, and Traquan Farmer in. Looks like that was Traquan's the one who brought him down. Traquan Farmer has made some nice special teams tackles this year. Obviously, that's not the first time we've called his name on special teams. Traquan on this offer. That curls. Youth movement still in full swing. Youth movement in, in uh, full swing for Nelson County, too. They don't have a lot of seniors. First and ten for the governor. He'll snap at the chambers again. He wants to try the right side. Not much there as he's dragged to the turf. Juan Thornhill making a stop in the backfield. Boy, how about that? When your safety comes from uh, 11, 10, 9 yards deep to make a hit in the other team's backfield, that's pretty special. Boy, it's a nice play. And Dante Poindexter in on the outside was able to turn that play back inside. Juan came in, cleaning up up the middle. Chambers hesitated a bit in the backfield looking for the hole, and it seemed like the hole did open up, but Thornhill filled it more quickly than Chambers did. Second and 10 on the way for Nelson County. Right hash mark. Of course, they've got the unbalanced line to the right. Wide side of the field. They've got a lot of room over there. Nelson Dews is the only one station to take that away. Flag comes out, and it'll blow a play dead. Dre Taylor. Was headed right up the middle for a big gain, but it was all sides on the Alta Vista Colonels. And, and that was Claude L. Moon, who was stunning in the linebacker, coming in off that linebacker position. He was stunning and just got a little bit, a little bit anxious. And after sitting out two games, you can understand why he is a little anxious. He, he's raring to go. He wants to get in that backfield. Colonels are starting to, to pin their ears back a little bit and, and really come after Nelson. They're starting to figure out this blocking scheme of this single one. I think you're right, Mr. Briggs. 8.40 remaining here in the Apple Market second quarter. 14-0 is your Alpha Vista currently. Got some updates from some other area games as we go on. 
Snap goes back. This time it's to Taylor. He's going right up the middle again. Got a solid gain here before he's brought down. Thornhill there for the stop. Donovan Montague there for the stop. And Clyde L. Moon getting up off the bottom of the pile. Got it close to first down yardage. And they will signal a first down. So nice running there by Taylor, who just a sophomore for the Nelson County Governors. Ability to play the big part in Nelson County, being able to maintain control of the ball so far in the ball game. They've had two uh, penalties and they've given themselves an opportunity to extend the drive. Yep, they've had some nice drives. They picked up that one fourth down conversion. That was big. And you're right, some penalties in there as well. Snap goes back to Taylor again. Nothing there. He is shut down by Donovan Monaghy, or excuse me, Dante Poindexter. I'm sorry. Poindexter got a hold of him up around the shoulder pads. Oscar would not let him go, drove him back, and the whistles came out before he could bring him to the turf. Forward progress would stop. Forward progress, two yards deep into the backfield. Uh, and, and Dante can, uh, continues to look like he's improving. And it, it, as Coach Sean has alluded to, he, he's finally starting to feel healthy. He had a long bout with a shoulder injury. Looks like he's getting over that and really starting to play some muscle. He's down there in a four-point stance just to the right of the center. Reverse play coming here for Nelson County. Inside reverse, nothing doing there for Carlos Rodriguez. They gave it to him on the underneath handoff, and he couldn't pick up any yards on that left side. It's going to bring up fourth and long for Nelson County. Excuse me, it'll bring up third and about 12. I'm sorry. Got my downs mixed up there, Oscar. Wishful thinking, Kyle. Maybe so. Let's see what Nelson County can do here on third and 13. Now, a little bit different look to Malcolm Lewis at that time, Clyde. They went down into a, a four-point stance, and they went with really more of a 5-3 as opposed to the traditional 3-5 that they ordinarily run. Colonels will feature some different looks on that defense uh, from time to time, and again, that's one thing Coach Mike Revis is great at. Snap goes back to Chambers. He's going to fake the inside handoff. Now he wants to throw the reverse to Rodriguez. He's caught it. He's across the first down marker. He's got the yards to pick it up. No, he is short. I'm sorry. He's across the 40-yard line, and he can get to about – the 42-yard line, so he was close, but he is still going to be a yard short. Coach Post is going to think about it again, I believe. They'll call it fourth and a long one here, Oscar. Uh, they've been successful in this yardage, and uh, Kyle, that place, everything flowed over to the right. Uh, one 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 receiver snuck out to the left side, left one-on-one. Nelson Dews was about 10 yards downfield, wide open. Nelson did a good job closing and getting to the, the receiver, but it uh, such a well-designed play, and it was executed extremely well. Fourth, and we'll call it two. Coach Poston, I think, is going to burn a timeout once the play clock gets down low enough. Nelson County has not broken their huddle yet. They do call a timeout. We'll take the timeout with them. Another fourth down on the way for Nelson County. When you come back, they trail 14-0 out to this, the leading on 105.5 KD Country. Stay cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling, on the ready to keep you comfortable year-round. Locally owned and operated, just a call away with over 20 years' experience. Licensed and bonded, Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling, specializing in heating, air, plumbing, and electrical, any season, any time. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling, keeping you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Give them a call today. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling, Gretna. Here's more award-winning high school sports with Kyle and Oscar on 105.5 KD Country. Fourth and one on the way for Nelson County. I would assume my coach Post is taking the time out there, Oscar, that they're probably going to go for. Uh, that's absolutely right. And, 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 again, he's not waiting to, to hear a call from me, but that's the right call here. You've got to watch for the hard count first. And, uh, again, they've been very successful in, in picking up this county yardage so far tonight. You're right. Those of the football resting on the 40-yard line. they got to get it across the 41s. They do need about one and a half. They need a little bit more than one yard, at least from this vantage point. Chambers in the backfield by himself. Nelson County's line moved early. No flags come out, and Chambers picks up the first down. Boy, it looked like there was three or four guys on the right side of that line, Oscar, that had about a half a count head start. No flags, no whistles, so the chains keep moving for Nelson County as he gets it all the way to the 45. Again, the Colonels have only had three possessions in the first half tonight, and one of those was on one play when Fidel stumbled the ball. So, again, nice job by Nelson County extending these drives and keeping the ball away from out of this one. Nelson will snap this one, middle of the field, 45-yard line. we got a few shout-outs, Oscar, but we'll see Chambers, same formation. He's all by himself in the backfield. Everybody else 
over there to the right side except for two linemen. Chambers going up the middle, nothing doing that time. That's Brown there to slay him to the ground. Juan Thornhill also helping out on the tackle. Boy, it's just amazing that you, you don't talk about Justin in on the tackle and Warren helping and you know, Warren coming in from, from six, seven yards downfield. Just he's got so much speed and, and just gets such a nose for the ball. He gets his nose on just about every play defensively too. Yes, he does. Juan Thornhill again. He's just got that knack. He's got that vision. So when a hole does open up for the running back to see, chances are he's seeing it at the same time. Second and 10 on the way for Nelson County. Right hash mark this time. Right side of the field is the short side of the field. A lot of curls stacked up on that D-line showing blitz. Chambers going to take it to the right. Oh, hit hard around the helmet by Malbach. That slowed him down. And then Moon cleaned him up out of bounds. Hard running by Chambers. Man, he ran through two or three really good shots from the Colonel D. And was able to get about three yards downfield, too. And I'm uh, surprised that he was able to get downfield that far. Johnson was closing in on him. I thought he was going to get to him first. Uh, Beachy Lawson did a nice job of, of hitting him. Beachy did hit him hard. And, and uh, again, I think Chambers dropped his shoulder, and Beachy was coming in kind of low. So their helmet hit right there. That's one you got to be careful with, but I don't think Michi was targeting at all. He was just trying to get in there and bring Chambers down. Yeah, when I say lost, he didn't yeah. literally lost. He dove trying to make the tackle, and it just happened that Chambers did the same. Third and six for Nelson County. Taylor's going to take it up the middle. He's got some room. He tried to run through one thorny on. I think he's got enough for the first down. Nelson Dews came in to help him out. But, boy, Taylor gets ahead of steam, Oscar, and he's more of a fullback type of guy. He's a little smaller. He's kind of brawny and burly and gets a full head of steam. And he hit Juan Thornhill and drove Juan back about a yard, which is hard to do. And just when I mentioned that it looked like the Colonels had this thing figured out, the posting's thrown a little bit different different wrinkle in with some different personnel. And the Colonels, again, having trouble figuring out exactly who's got the ball. Yep, Alta Vista is leading 14 nothing, but you got to be uh, in spot or not inspired, but you got to like the kind of inspired football. Nelson County playing reverse to Rodriguez. He'll pick up about five. He's dropped by Darius Johnson. Boy, it gets the crowd into it, too, as the Nelson County governors do move this ball down the field, Oscar. Picked up, what, seven on that play? Six mm-hmm. on that play, and uh, again, a lot of ball deception, different blocking schemes, and the Colonels are sending everybody, just have not figured this out yet. Without a doubt, with 256 remaining here in the second quarter, 14 nothing Colonel's lead. Now, I was just going to echo what you're saying, Oscar. Without a doubt, it's a different look. You get a bunch of different plays that you're never going to see from any other team, with the exception of William Campbell. They're running the single wing as well. Second and four on the way. Going to Taylor again right up the middle. He's hit low this time. Juan Thornhill came with a little more thunder the second time around. Stopped him in his tracks, but it was a two or three yard pickup before Juan could get to him. That play hits quick. It hits quick, and they're going to give him closer to four yards. They're, he's going to be just about half a yard short. Third down and about half a yard short of the first down marker. 2.20, clock continues to run, and Nelson County keeping the ball away from out to this one. Nice drive put together by Nelson County on this one. Yeah, maybe, maybe the best defense is a good offense. That's what Nelson County's doing so far. They do trail 14-0. Colonel's on top, third and short on the way here to the home team, the Governors. Man in motion is Rodriguez. They go to Taylor again. This time he stuffed up. Big old scrum there. There was about 18 players, uh, nine from each squad in on that scrum, and he was going nowhere. He's close to that first down marker. Chambers is signaling, trying to uh, help the officials out, but I think he's going to be about a foot or so short. They're going to stop the clock and bring out the chains again. 141 left to play in the half here, Oscar. 14 nothing is your colonel lead. What a good half it has been. And the ball is dead on the 35-yard line. Uh, it's going to be about half a yard short. Uh, but they all bring it in. Coach Poston can request that and uh, give the players a little bit of time to regroup. It'll be fourth and less than a yard. Yep. And they do signal fourth down there a little bit short. But, hey, 141 remaining. Thinking Nelson County, one for two on fourth downs tonight. They picked up one on the running play, and then they had the other play where there was uh, fourth and eight, fourth and nine, where they completed the pass, but they were about a full yard or two short. So uh, here we go, perhaps the biggest play of the game so far, 133 remaining in the Apple Market second quarter. Clock rolling after the officials put the ball back in play. Chambers is the only back again 
for Nelson County. Everybody else up there to the right side of that offensive line is stacked up near it. It's back in the chamber. Chamber's diving ahead. He looks short, and it's going to depend on where the spot is at. Thornhill was there. Poindexter was there. Trayvon Elliott was there for the Colonels. Big mass of bodies. Not just from this side, Kenny, and he's had the ball on the 35-yard line. If that's where they drop it, it is not a first down. Now, the other, if where they've got it spotted now, it's going to be about half, it's going to be about a football short, it looks like. Yep, they're going to stop play and measure again. They measured to see how much they had to go on fourth down. Now they're going to measure it again. Yeah, that ball got it. The tail end of that ball is sitting on the 35-yard line, Kyle. It's going to be short. Yep. 115 remaining here in the Apple Market second quarter. Remember what they say. Visit the Apple today. He is short. Big stop by the Alta Vista Colonel's defense. Boy, they needed that because the governors were really starting to get some traction, getting ahead of steam. Who knows? They may have scored if they could have kept that drive going. Less than a minute and a half to go. But, man, that's a big stop by the Alta Vista defense. So it is. And, and with 115 remaining, not a ton of time. But the Colonels have their timeouts left. True. And I think you'll see them be patient, but I think you got to watch. Watch for Donovan Monty have that tight end position, Kyle. That's a, that's got a hook. No, that's an excellent point there, Oscar. He's a very dynamic weapon out there catching the football. And of course, he can pass, too. Thornhill wants to pass on first down. Swing it out to the left side. Complete to Darius Johnson. Johnson across the 50. Now at the 45. Still on his feet. Still on his feet. Driving. Finally brought down by six, count them, six Nelson County defenders had to get in there and pull Darius Johnson to the ground. Big pickup there on first down, and it's a fresh set of downs here with 103 left to play in the half. At the Nelson County 43-yard line, maybe the 44, and again, the, the progression of this out to this team, one through that ball before the, as Johnson was coming out of the break, Two receivers each side. Juan's going to sprint out to his right, wants to throw again, looking downfield. He's going to turn it up, took one hit. Now he throws. Complete on the right sideline there to Michi Malbec. Malbec catches and steps out of bounds. No, they're going to say he was out of bounds when he caught it. Incomplete pass. And it'll bring up second and ten there for the Alta Vista Colonels. They lead 14 0, 48.4 seconds left in the half, Oscar. And Michi looked like he was tight rope and dragged his feet. Uh, but the ref was dead on the sideline and went, went downfield and immediately called it. He had a bounce. Looked like the ref had a good angle. He certainly called it with conviction. So uh, that play goes incomplete. Thornhill's going to set up shop again. He's got back right behind him. That's Destin Brown. He'll hand it to Destin Brown. Brown is way through the offensive line. He's across the 25, the 20, the 15. Can they catch him? No, they can't. Destin Brown put it into the end zone. Touchdown for the Alta Vista Colonels. From 44 yards out, how's that for a two-minute offense? They just handed to Destin Brown. Brown goes 44 yards to pay dirt for Alta Vista. They lead 20 to nothing now, extra point on the way. And we've alluded to it before, Destin, but uh, Destin Brown was in the finals of the state 100 meter last year, 100 yards last year. So you get him into that secondary, and not many people are going to catch him. And you can see why he was in the finals. Good hard running there from Destin Brown. The play hit so quick, I kind of got tongue-tied. He went right up the middle behind the center. Extra point snap goes back, and there will be some whistles here. It looked like one of the Colonels might have moved early up front. So back Walker Allen up a little bit. No, they're actually called against Nelson County. Even with that, the, uh, the snaps have not been, that's two of them, have not been very clean tonight. Again, I guess you're nit when I'm nitpicking. Yeah. Colonels are just going to uh, decline the penalty. Excuse me, they'll snap it from the same spot here. 48, excuse me, 40.8 seconds remaining. Of course, this play is a dead ball play. No time's going to run off the clock on the extra point. Walk around does convert that extra point. Colonels lead 21-0. Timeout. Nelson County is going to get the ball back before halftime on 105.5 KD Country. There's just one place where students are students first, and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes in Virginia are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics, high school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Brought to you by English Construction Company, Main Street, Alta Vista. More live high school sports action on 105.5 KD Country. Destin Brown taking it into the house from 44 yards out. It looked like the Colonels were going to be up against the clock. Oscar might have to throw a little bit. They did throw two pass plays prior to that. 
But when Dustin Brown can cover those 44 yards as quickly as he can, the clock doesn't matter much. Whether it's Dustin, Cottell, Juan, any of them, each, all of them can mm-hmm. strike. But you've got so many options that you're not restricted to just throwing the ball, and that's one thing that makes the Colonels dangerous. you got to assume Nelson County's going to say, okay, off of this, you're, you know, 40 seconds left, you're going to throw the ball. Not necessarily. And if they're back in that protection mode, really that, that allows those guys to get into the secondary. Once they get to the secondary, there's going to be playing the state, those four kids. I would agree. Just the sheer speed alone, but then also the the vision, the understanding of angles, the, the using the juke moves and the hesitations and the fakes and the stiff arms. They're all very good at that. Another touchback from Walker Allen, who was very good at kicking that ball long. Great one there from Walker. Got full leg into that one. Walker with the, his 12th touchback of the season, Oscar. That's a nice weapon to have. Over 90% on the PATs as well. Well, I don't... Do you give him a percentage point on the one that hit the upright and went through? <laughs> yeah, that counts. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if it rolls around the cup and falls in or if it goes straight in. Hey, we'll talk about some golf at halftime. The, uh, Colonel's golf season wrapping up, and they had a nice showing, and uh, the Generals had a nice showing as well. Nelson County going to try and continue their nice showing. They'll snap it to Chambers. Chambers running at the right side, runs into a big mass of body, still on his feet. Play gets blown dead there as Chambers forward of progress is finally stopped. And they'll give him at least six yards, maybe closer to seven or eight now, and the stick is finally down. Under 20 seconds to play down. This could be the last play of the half for Nelson County, and Coach Mark Post may not even elect to run another play, actually. I don't think you can see another one. They're not in any hurry. And, uh... Yep, they're just walking it back over the sideline. First half is done. It has been a very good one. Colonels leave, but maybe by not as much as you think. They're up 21-0. Some play halftime show on the way when you come back to 105.5 KD Country. At First National Bank, we have no service charges on debit cards, and we don't plan to. I'm Courtney Woody, and our local bank offers a variety of accounts for everyone, which will help you bank better and bank for less. First National also has no monthly maintenance fees on free checking, nonprofit, and faith-based checking accounts. If you're worried about your banking fees, contact First National Bank today. We have over 100 years of dependable, low-cost banking. First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Apple Auto Glass is your windshield repair and replacement center in Lynchburg. You get a free car wash with all windshields replaced in the shop. Apple Auto Glass wants the fans to enjoy the boys of fall this high school football season. When I feel that you smell that fresh cut grass. I'm back in my helmet, cleats, and shoulder pads. Where the boys of fall. Apple Auto Glass salutes the boys of fall. Tonight's game is brought to you by Perkins Tire and Auto Service in Chatham. And we do mean service because Perkins Tire will pick up and deliver your vehicle. Call Perkins Tire in Chatham, 434-432-1100. 432-1100. Whether you need brand name tires or service, call Calvin, Stanley, or Frankie at Perkins Tire and Service Center on Highway 29 in Tight Squeeze, just south of Chatham. Perkins Tire and Service Center, your authorized Michelin Tire dealer. Back to the press box for high school sports on 105.5 KD Country. The Boy Halftime Show is finally here. It seemed like it took a while, Oscar, although you know, Nelson County kept the football on the ground. That kept the clock moving. Colonels, but we know they can run the football with the best of them. So uh, the first half didn't take probably as long as we thought, but it certainly featured some good action and featured a really spirited effort from those governors. I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, figured it was going to be a blowout. Oh, girls are going to be up 50, 60, and up at halftime. Not the case here tonight, Oscar. No, the, they've done a, Nelson County's done a good job of limiting possessions that Alphabus has had. Um, Alphabus has only had four possessions, and again, one of those was a was a first down fumble by 5-0-2. So, uh, nice efficiency from the Colonels. 75% of the time they scored touchdowns, but yeah. Uh, time of possession, Nelson County's really dominated that. They have, and that's part of the reason for the score. And you got to believe that's part of Nelson County's game plan coming in. Let's keep our hands on the football. That's less of a chance that the Thornhills and the Malbacks and the Johnsons and the Moons and the Browns of the world will have the football. And certainly, 
they did execute that as much as they could. Colonel's defense made some great stops, had some fourth down stops, some third down stops that were big. And Coach Revis, uh, I think as we alluded to a few times, starting to figure out this single wing offense that, again, if you join this late, it is a little bit different. You don't see it a whole, whole lot. It does take some adjustment. And it looked like the Colonel's had it figured out late midway through the second quarter. And then that last drive, you know, down, Coach Post made a few adjustments, a little bit different blocking scheme. Uh, once again, we really had the Colonel's back on their heels a little bit before they finally bowed up and were able to stop them. It's a long drive up here. Like I said, you, you're coming off a big win last week, a hard-fought victory at that over Dan River where you really had to expend a lot of energy, emotional and physical. So it's, uh, you know, maybe a recipe for a letdown. I mentioned it to Coach Sean. I don't think I don't think the Colonels are, are flat or anything. I think they're playing hard. It's just, uh, you know, some counties had some, some good football plays. And, and, you know, as we say this, I mean, the Colonels are up 21 nothing. It's not like they're playing awful, and it's not like Nelson County is, uh, Nelson County doesn't have a lead, so, oh no, we, we kind of act like the Colonels are trailing right now, but they are playing solid football, and um, I think uh, I think we're all a little bit impressed by Nelson County, they are 2-4 and four right now, they beat uh, Page County, and they beat Hargrave, and they've, uh, they've got, again, as you scan the roster there, Oscar, they've got a lot of young guys out there. They've got a lot of young guys, and, and the guys that have run the ball, you talk about Chambers, Rodriguez, Taylor, they've all run the ball well in this team. So I think, you know, we talked earlier before the game that Nelson County was going to employ the strategy of, of not having all the dogs in this game and, and trying to, to match up with some teams that they can be competitive with. But um, there's certainly some building blocks that Coach Post has got. Yeah. Um, certainly looks like his team's prepared on both sides of the ball. Uh, certainly from, you know, how the business had trouble with that offense and, uh, the cover's not there here. And again, he's got some blocks he can build on. And if, if the Nelson County people are patient with such motion, uh, they you may have uh, a Phoenix coming out of what he's up here in the next couple of years. Really excellent point. And, you know, the single wing offense, it's hard to stop, but it's also hard to learn, too. So the more they run this system, the more these backs get comfortable uh, trusting those offensive linemen, the more comfortable the offensive linemen get. It's only going to get tougher for defenses. Stop. So that's something to think about, too. We'll take a timeout. We'll, uh, we'll come back in the next segment, do a little high view halftime highlights. We'll talk about the golf some. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about that. Anything goes here on the Subway Halftime Show. Colonel's lead, 21-0. You heard it all live on 105.5 KD Country. Uh, unfortunately, I have some bad news. How bad is it, doctor? We've done all we can. Your heat pump's not going to make it. Oh, no. <laughs> Honey, it's going to be okay. We'll call Select Air Mechanical and Electrical, 332-2600. With over 60 years' experience, they'll have us comfortable again in no time. I recommend Select Air to all my patients. Call 332-2600 or visit selectairmechanical.com. They can handle all your home comfort needs, and they're an authorized train dealer. It's hard to stop a train. Our thanks to these members of the Katy Country Sports Club. El Cerrito and Alta Vista. Throw on a sombrero. Shake your maracas. It's El Cerrito time. Authentic Mexican cuisine only at El Cerrito. Robertson Auto Sales, Lynchburg. Dealers with a passion for great quality pre-owned vehicles. We love cars and trucks and it shows in our inventory. Aubrey Rosser, attorney at law, going above and beyond the courtroom. Your choice for any and all legal advice. Serving Alta Vista, Lynchburg, and Roanoke areas. One Stop Mart, Main Street, Alta Vista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken is kicking. Mad Biddy's Antiques, 105 Wood Lane, just off of Main Street. Come find what you didn't know you were looking for. Dairy Freeze, serving ice cream, yogurt, fries, hamburger, hot dogs, and fresh chili since 1961 from their Main Street location. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Subway halftime show returns here from Nelson County. 21-0 is your Alta Vista Colonel lead. Oscar, a whole lot of things going on uh, both earlier this week, a whole lot of things going on tomorrow. 
JD Country is going to be about how that the old timers Jubilee and Gretna, Eleanor Haney, our very esteemed sound engineer, will be there. Lori Johnson will be there. New guy Todd will be there. It's going to be a lot of fun for the old timers Jubilee, and uh, they'll have some music, some dancing, some uh, all the usual fun and festivities that comes up. Car show, candy yeah. market. It's a it's a cornucopia of things going on. They do it right down there in Gretna, and I uh, mentioned the music. Eleanor Haney had a couple uh, hits of her own, of course, back in the day. You might remember her hit single in the 90s, and then also uh, she had uh, going down the ENS part. But we digress. Let's talk about those golf teams, Oscar. I mentioned Alta Vista in the state tournament there, the 1A state tournament down there in Bristol. Of course, William Campbell, our neighbors uh, over there to the east, they pick up the state championship. Great golf season uh, by both those teams, and um I know the Colonels were, were very proud of how they uh, how they fared this season in in the state tournament. Of course, William Campbell playing out of Ad Creek, senior uh, uh state champion, Josiah Singleton, uh, Watson's medalist, but he anchored that team, and a couple other kids that were right there with him uh, pretty much ran away with it. Uh, Alta Vista finished fourth, playing out of Alta Vista Country Club, another little nine hole call, of course. Of course, Athletics. Uh, Dennis Carter calls the Raiders. Uh, hey, they won the 2A state championship, so a lot of good things with golf was in the immediate 45 minute drive out of Alpha District. So, nice job by all those teams. Congratulations to all those teams as well. Yeah, Dogwood District uh, last year in basketball, Oscar. Of course, we had two state champions with Dan River and Alpha Vista. And then uh, this year in golf, two state champions, Appomattox and William Campbell. So, it's, uh, you know, it's a good area for golf. It always has been. You're a golfer. I'm a golfer. You know, we always enjoy getting out there hitting the, the little white ball around. It's nice to see everybody have success. We had, of course, Ethan uh, Maddox and John Cogsdale on last week. We always talk about our good buddy Scooter Duff. Don't know if that gang is uh, listening at home or maybe they're in the stands right now here at Nelson. But a big shout-out to them. Shout-out to another golf buddy I know. Good friend of mine, Tom Mensel. We call him the Badger on the on the bowling lanes, though, Oscar, because he's not he's not friendly and gentleman like like he is in golf. While out there on the lanes, he's relentless, man. He attacks. So that's never called bowling a gentleman's game. So. I agree. I agree. It's knockdown drag out out there, especially when you get me on the lanes, Colonels. Well, they had some knockdown drag out kind of battles this season tonight. Been a pretty good one as well. It's featured a. Oh, I'd say a number of candidates for the High View Halftime Highlights. So let's hear it. Of course, all these brought to you by High View Motors, GMC, and Alpha Vista. From small to tall, High View has it all. Start the staff count, now running to his right. Looks like a design running play. Juan's going to turn it up. Right sideline, he's crossed the first down marker. The 10, the 5, come back inside for a touchdown. Juan Thornhill up again. He's got back right behind him. That's Destin Brown. He'll hand it to Destin Brown. Brown is a Way through the offensive line, he's across the 25, the 20, the 15, and they catch him. Some they can't. Destin Brown, I put it into the end zone. Touchdown for the Alta Vista Colonels from 44 yards out. No one knows trucks like we know trucks. Come see us and you the free. We're small to tall, we've got it all. Highview Motors, GMC. Back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. Subway halftime show returns here. I'm Kyle Haney. He's Oscar Briggs. It is the Alta Vista Colonels. 21-0 over the Nelson County Governor's High View. Highlight was exciting as always. It might be closing in on that time that we love uh, to win with Subway, Oscar. But um, before we get to that, I don't want to fool anybody, but before we get to that, how about some scores? I look around the area here. A lot of these courtesy of our good friend and uh, I've been using the word colleague a lot. Um, I say co-worker. I need to get into Webster's there and find some other words for colleague, but so it's just associate. Exactly. Bob Alves is bringing up a lot of these scores, and uh, he's a big Nelson County fan. He always loves coming up here. Got some scores courtesy of Mr. Alves and a few courtesy of a uh, my buddy Eric Hall down there at Gretna. Appomattox up 7 nothing on the Hawks right now. And um, that's an interesting game. Appears to be anybody's uh, guess at who wins that one. Amherst, they're up 21-7 over Rustburg. JF is up over Turner Ashby. Danville up 
21-7 over Magnuson. The Oscar and I were talking about the GW Danville football team and what their chances were tonight. Nearly 21-7 over Magnuson. Dan Rivers up 21-0 over William Campbell. Liberty is up 10-8 over Buckingham. Uh, let's see here. Tunstall up 14 nothing over Bassett. Brookville's leading right now 20-7 over Franklin County. And I believe Dan River was up 14 to nothing. Uh, I'm not positive there on that. I may have gotten confused. Uh, I can't be right. They were up 21 nothing over William Campbell. I'm so sorry about that. And, of course, uh, Colonel fans, if you just joined us again, Alpha Vista, they lead 21-0 over the Nelson County Governor's Oscar, and uh, talk about the second half a little bit. I mean, it's one thing for Nelson County to run that ball control offense and just try to keep the ball away and manage the game, but now they're down 21 nothing. They may not be able to do that in the second half if they want to have a chance to win. Well, that's, that's quite a dilemma for them because they, they bank on, on on that run without a single wing, and uh, again, Boy, they, they did such a good job of ball control in that, in that first half. The Colonels, again, only had four possessions. Again, people can get tired of hearing me, but again, four possessions. The Colonels scored three touchdowns on three of them, and the fourth one was a one, one play drive as Crydell held first down fumble the ball. So um, you limit the Colonels' possessions. They do a good job of moving the ball. Yeah, I think they have to be patient uh, and, and try to continue to run the ball. We've seen it. What happens when you start putting the ball in the air? Yeah. It's a Nelson County, I know, threw one pass, two. I think it was two. Uh, they had the one complete on fourth down. That was short for fourth down yards. And I think they uh, they tried another way. Actually, they completed the other one on the, uh, the reverse throwback kind of a play right there. So two for two passing for Nelson. But you're right. When you start passing downfield a lot against out the Vista, normally it's not a good thing. Colonels have 14 interceptions on the season. Six of those have been taken back for touchdowns, so the Alphavista defense is opportunistic. They're ball hawking, and they like to score, so you're right. Coach Post may just say, hey, even though we haven't scored, what we're doing now gives us the best chance to score, as opposed to just chucking it deep. So they may just use the same strategy. You know, I think you know, I think that is a sound strategy from what we've seen so far. Uh, the scores at halftime, for the most part, as you look at the teams that have been the most successful, uh, Gretna, mm-hmm. uh, Dan River, and Alpha Vista, and uh, now Nelson, uh, all three have, have featured ball controls offensively in the first half, and it's been successful. Well, you're absolutely right. Subway halftime show sort of dwindling to a close here, so now is your chance to win with Subway. All you got to do is go like KD Country's Facebook page, and here's the code word we want you to post today, Oscar. Jubilee, that's in honor of the Gretna Old Timers Jubilee tomorrow, where we will be broadcasting live. I'll even spell it for you if you need some help. J U B I L E E, that's Jubilee. Be the first person to post it to the KD Country Facebook page, and you'll win yourself foot long sub meal deal courtesy of Subways in Alta Vista. Even if you spell it wrong, you're the first person will probably give you credit. That's what I was going to ask. I'm going to count off for spelling your stuff ahead. I I am. I'm not a stickler on spelling. And, uh, again, Jubilee is the code word. Somebody's heard that already, and they're posting it to the KD Country Facebook page right now. That'll be your chance to win with Subway, courtesy of Subways and Alpha Vista. Two great locations. Eleanor and I were in there before the game. I know you popped in there. Main Street is great as always. In the Walmart on Clarion Road. I went in for a drink the other day, Oscar. And again, I know we've talked about how underrated that Walmart location is, but I'm going to say it again. It's really, you think, oh, I don't want to go to Walmart and stand in line, blah, blah, blah. You can park over there on the side. You can get in. You can get out. The customer service is fantastic there, as you'd expect from Subway. And it really is uh, something that uh, most people probably don't take full advantage of. I know I took advantage of it one time this week. And plan to do so again. Let's take advantage of a timeout right now, though, shall we? We'll sort some things out. Second half will be here before you know it. Currently 21-0. Third quarter about to get started here on 105.5 KD Country. For a storm door that offers style and convenience, come to English's Building Supply in Alta Vista for a Pella self-storing storm door. These doors feature screens that are always there when you need them. And 
Pella's self-storing storm doors are backed by Pella's lifetime storm door protection plan. Come by English's Building Supply. See the full line of Pella storm doors. English is. English's is your complete home center. Got a $15 mail-in rebate during October. Brother needs a thicker, and sister wants a ride. Uncle needs a sports car to keep him satisfied. Mama, she wants comfort, luxury and style. And daddy, he just wants a deal that's gonna make him smile. Everybody's happy, you can hear them all say. We're glad we went to Fellas, Fellas Chevrolet. Competition for all dealers in Central VA. A short drive will save you money. In the past century, our community has grown, and Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service has grown too, alongside the families they've known for so long. Finch and Finch is proud to have served you over 100 years. A family business, Finch and Finch Funeral and Cremation Service, dedicated to your service. Finch and Finch for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. Apple Market third quarter about to get underway here from Nelson County. And, uh, it's football time of the year. you got to stop off at the Apple Market, get you some snacks, drinks, etc. Uh, I know they got some donuts in there now. Great prices on gas. Yeah, yeah. Fine fried chicken, too. Yes, they do. Uh, get a fried chicken, you'll find in Alpha uh, I don't... I don't See how you could be getting some of that fried chicken tomorrow, heading down to the Old Timers Jubilee, having a good time, stopping in, saying hey to KD Country. Man, it, it, it's fall. It's nice to get all that stuff going on. I know they got the uh, big Apple Harvest Fest up there at Gross's Orchard in Fed.
eighteen yard pickup as he's across the forty to the forty one for a first down. Nice and of course we we documented the Devontae Fox story. He was out last year. And it's good to see him back at, at full speed. Uh, and really participating in this uh, in this successful kernel season. Been a big contributor to the team. Yeah, it really is. Played some outstanding defense all year. Hasn't played a ton of offense, but he is right now set up shop right behind. Donovan Montague this time, first and 10 for the right hash mark, 41-yard line for the Alpha Vista Colonel. They're in their own territory. Going to toss it out to Devontae Clark. Devontae's going to turn it up to see him again. Now he's across the sideline, across the 40, the 35, the 25, flushed out of bounds. Finally, nice running there from Devontae Clark on the toss play. Big pickup. Colonel's with the 41-0 lead, but don't tell Devontae Clark that. 35-yard pickup by Clark. Donovan Montague did a nice job getting down the lead bed on the block. It's an interesting play that you see some teams run out of that shotgun where the quarterback pitches it, and then he goes and becomes the lead blocker. It's not something you typically think of. But then again, Donovan Montague isn't exactly your typical quarterback at 6'3", 190 pounds. I'd love to have him as my lead blocker. He's in there at the quarterback again. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Going to hand it off to Devontae Clark again. Clark this time hit hard. He'll get dropped by number 88. That's Cody Baker. We'll bring him down. Just a one or two yard pickup this time for Devontae Clark. 854 remains here in the fourth quarter. Colonel's leading 41 to nothing. And, and we've seen uh, Coach Sharnas will be relatively conservative as we, as we go forward for the rest of the ball game. Yeah, we know Montague can pass, but Coach Sharnas, that's not exactly the thing that he wants to do when he's up big 41 nothing. I, I know. Donnie would love to get a chance to show off the wings some, but uh, I think you're probably just going to see the Colonels keep it on the ground. They give it to Nelson Dude this time. Dude's going to turn it up. Yeah, he's going to break it outside. Shakes one man loose. Hits low around the 10 and brought down around the 9 or the 8-yard line. Wide receiver sweep successfully executed there by Nelson Dude in the Alta Vista Colonel offense. Nice to see Nelson get that little jet sweep that we see so often that uh, Michi gets the run, and he ran it successfully as well. Nelson, yeah, got a full head of steam, some nice moves there, a little uh, stutter step, juke one guy out of the way, and then uh, ran over the last guy there at the end. First and goal coming down from the nine-yard line. Montague, call the snap count, he's going to put another guy in motion, going to fake it to him, going to run it himself. Not many blocking over there on the left side. Montague runs out of a short tackle, and in the end zone, stiff arm, sticks it across the pylon. Touchdown, Donovan Montague on a nice running play. Ran out of one tackle. Heck, his jersey almost came off. Spun around, stiffed on the last guy at about the two. Stuck the nose of the football out and got it in for a touchdown. Nine yard scoring play. Spun around on one leg. <laughs> Showed great bounce, great athleticism on that play. Donovan Montague, nine yard rushing TD there for the Alta Vista Colonels. 7.43 left to play here in the Apple Market fourth quarter. Walk around on to try another kick. This time it is Chancellor Foreman on to hold for the Alpha Vista Colonels. Foreman checks with the kicker, makes sure he's set. Good snap. They get it back. Kick is good, and I misspoke. It was not walk around. It was Nick Foley on to kick the extra point, and Foley knocks it in. Nice job successfully executing the extra point there for the Colonels. Time out here. Alpha Vista up 48 nothing. Seven minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the ball game. On 105.5 KD Country. No one knows trucks like we know trucks. Come see us and you'll agree. From small to tall, we've got it all. I view motors, GMC. Come on in. Bring the family to see your friends at High View Motors. Your high school sports station with award-winning coverage on 105.5 KD Country. Donovan Montague into the house from nine yards out for the Alta Vista Colonels. We'll see if that caps off their scoring for the night. Oscar, who knows? Montague, third touchdown on the year there for him. First two were receiving touchdowns, so he's run one now. And, uh, Donovan has thrown a touchdown. He's thrown one touchdown pass, so... Uh, Donovan, much like Juan Thornhill, he scored in a lot of different ways. Colonels lead 48-0 to here over Nelson County. Walker Allen will come back out for the kickoff. Nick Foley 
as I mentioned, did the honors on the extra point last time, knocking that one through the uprights for Alpha Vista. Bob Colonel scored tonight. Uh, that just speaks to speaks to the depth of uh, level of athleticism and playmakers they have. Destin Brown, Juan, Destin again, Claudel, Nelson Dews, Claudel again, and Donovan Montague. Yeah, you're right. That is uh, it's pretty impressive. The more that you think about it, Oscar, it's um, very, very impressive, actually. He's going to get returned by Rodriguez here in the kickoff from Walker Allen. Thrown forwards for about the, oh, 28-yard return there. I'm sorry, that's math again. Never mind, strong suit. Got to to about the 24-yard line, maybe the 23. Down under seven minutes remaining here in the Apple Market fourth quarter. Now you're seeing on the defensive side of the ball now full substitution for the Colonel. Yeah, Alpha Vista getting some new playmakers in there. Certainly a lot of capable people. We'll try to identify as many of them as we can. See Clark, Traquan Farmers in, Jamel Jones is in. Matt Aiken is out there trying to direct the defense. He was the one that uh, recovered that onside kick. Handoff goes to Carlos Rodriguez for Nelson County. He's dropped down after about a six or seven yard pickup. Ty Woodruff, they're helping on the stop. Jones as well. Mateo Malbach, Traylon Clark. Again, trying to identify everybody that's out there. Ethan Young is out there in the defensive line. You see Big 75, Randall Clark out there in the defensive line. Juan Thornhill. Second and five on the way here for Nelson County. They've got some substitutes in as well. I believe this one snapped to number three, Ellis Rose. He's headed up the middle. He's across the 35 to the 36. Dropped it enough for a first down. Ethan Young in on the stop. Matt Aiken as well. And Jamal Thornhill all teaming up for that one. Stephen Farmer's out there on the D-line. Some I can see. No, uh, he may have gotten close to everybody, Oscar. Tall Todd Woodruff, he's out. Yeah, Phil's only given up 20 points so far this year. Yeah, only giving up 20 points on defense. They've got three shutouts. They're trying to preserve this one. I know this second team unit does take a lot of pride in that. Wow, hard hitting right there that time. Chancellor Borman coming in, cleaning up the ball carrier after he got stood up by his teammate. Looks like Jamal Thornhill was the one that did the standing up, Kyle. Nice play right there. Number 63, Trayvon Clark will trot off. Brings up second to eight. 451. Foxer continues to run. 48. Nothing. Colonel lead. Colonel's again in action next week, taking on the Chatham Cavaliers, a team that's given them some pretty good ball games in uh, in recent years. Alpha Vista will be at home. Subway pregame show gets started around the usual time, 6.30. Make sure you tune in for us. And, again, what should be a pretty good ball game. Ellis Rose will try the right side. Good solid pickup. He's still short of the first down marker. Needs to get to the 46. He got it to right around the 45. Bring up third and one for Nelson County here. Nelson hits the road again to play at William Campbell. Yeah, that's a ooh, battle of two single-wing teams. You need to... Maybe alert the media or somebody, uh, some sort of single wing media. Are they out there? Do they have that? I think they do. I think there's a website dedicated to single wing football out there, Oscar. I've probably been on it at some point in my life. Third one coming for Nelson County out of the single wing here. Unbalanced line is to the right. They've kept that same formation pretty much all night. They'll snap at the chambers. He had to grab the high snap. He's short, though. Nice stop by the Colonel's defense. And that is number 50. Stephen Farmer back there doing the damage. He had some help on a nice stop right there. Let's see if Nelson County goes for it on fourth and one. If they don't, then the Colonels are probably uh, assured of a shutout. If they go for it and pick it up, well, then the Alphavis defense is going to have to still work a little bit to keep the shutout. They are going for it, Oscar. And, you know, you, you don't play special calls. That's the right thing to do. You're trailing 48 to nothing. And to be able to continue this drive, if they will be able to score the some type of ball victory for him anyway. I would think so. It looks like Taylor and Chambers in the backfield again. They'll snap this far side hash mark. Chambers going to go right to the middle. He's got the first down. He's even across the 50. 
four or five yard pickup there for Ray Chambers on the quick hitting play from Nelson County. And, and we talked to Coach Thomas enough to know that, and, and Coach Rose as well, they want to preserve the shutout. Yep. But they will, I, I would be shocked if they send uh, the starters back out on the field. Those are like these kids that are out there now that, uh, that work hard to practice every day and every week. They'll let them ride it out and try to defend the Colonel Honor and then try to preserve the shutout. Yeah, I would agree. They want to keep the shutout as much as they can, but they're not going to lose sleep if they don't have the shutout. They're not going to send uh, those big name guys like you mentioned back in there. And let's let's face it, this other uh, this second unit for the Alphabet Colonels, they're pretty doggone capable too. I I feel like Coach Revis knows he's in pretty good hands right now. That was uh, Big Randall Clark making the stop on the D line for the Alphabet Colonels that time. Jeremy, second and nine, I'm Jeremy, sorry. Jeremy Gregory in. Uh, seeing some action as well. Yeah, number 22, Jeremy Gregory. He is a senior and a hard worker out there. Second and nine coming up for Nelson County. We're under two minutes to go here. And again, it is a running clock, even if they go out of bounds. So that's working for the Alta Vista Colonels as far as the shutout goes. Taylor, good hard running. He's across the 40. It's enough for a first down, I believe, from Nelson County. Are they going to mark him? Just shy of it, they will. It'll bring up third and inches now. You know, in, in, in retrospect, one thing we haven't seen a lot of tonight is the Charles flag. Good point. Uh, pretty clean game. A couple of uh, delayed game, a couple of illegal procedures yeah. on all sides, and for the most part, it's been penalty free on both sides. You're right. No, no holding, no block in the back, no late hits, no extracurriculars, no personal fouls, all that. So you're right. They're a pretty good, clean game, pretty fun game to watch. That's helping. Uh, go by pretty quickly. Under 60 seconds down to play. Chambers going to go up the right sideline. Going to meet some resistance around the 35-yard line. Force out of bounds around the 34 to the 33, it looked like. Timeout now by Nelson County and Coach Mark Post. We'll take the timeout with 50 seconds remain in this one. Alta Vista, they've got the 48 nothing lead. You've heard it all live on 105.5 KD Country. Hi, I'm Tracy Robinson of First National Bank. Did you know there are great home mortgage opportunities available right now? With rates being at an all-time low and 100% financing, our recognized mortgage lenders will deliver the right loan for your needs. Put this together with our other progressive mortgage products, our fast local service, and we're ready to lend. First National Bank, over 100 years of dependable custom banking. For you and your money, that's important. First National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Now back to the action with Colonel Sports on 105.5 KD Country. Back here, Nelson County, 50 seconds left. The Colonel's leading 48 to nothing. Coming off a timeout by Coach Mark Poston from Nelson, he substituted out. All his starters have been pulled. Okay, Mark Post has got the other unit in there as well. We'll see who's in the backfield for them. They snap it to number seven. That's Carlos Rodriguez. He's got some yards on the left side. And he's dragged down by about four or five Colonel defenders. Ball came out late. Official signaling he was down. And no fumble there. Ground caused the fumble. Looked like in the backfield with him was number 20, Andrew Shannon. Nelson's going to take another timeout. Let's keep it here, Audrey, since we just took one. We don't want to strain our sound engineer, Eleanor Haney, too much. She got a big day tomorrow down there at the Gretna Old Timers Jubilee. Again, make sure you join KD Country for that one. You can hear some songs you don't hear very often. It's going to be a good time down there in Gretna. Subway post game show right after this is going to be a good time. And uh, I mentioned that Aaron's Fall Fest Oscar. Make your plans now. Saturday, November 1st at the Aaron's Shopping Center in Alta Vista. That's across from the Walmart. Music, food, fun, and KD Country will be broadcasting live. We'll give away a guitar, a recliner, and, of course, the tickets to go see Garth Brooks later on in November. You don't want to miss the Heron's Fall Fest, November 1st, in Alta Vista. Second and six on the way. They snap it to Andrew Shannon. He's going to take off, get hit hard. Stopped there by number eight for the Alta Vista Colonels, Shaheen Pinnell. Good solo open field tackle there by Shaheen Pinnell. Don't forget, it's all about that. Uh, Nelson County's cover not being... Bears, Shahi Pinnell, just a freshman. Hmm. 11, 10 seconds left. We may not see another play by Nelson County. Yeah, yeah, Nelson's going to trot off. They're ready to shake hands. That'll do it. Big win here. That clock is stopped with three seconds left. 
let's keep it here during the timeout, Oscar. We thought we were ready to shake hands. So uh, Nelson is going to run one more play. Coach Mark Post can't take the timeout with him, so he figures I'll burn one. Let let my guys take one more play. <laughs> let's study the uh, – hey, Oscar, have you been to the KD Country YouTube page yet? You know, you go to kdcountry.com, you click on the YouTube link, you listen to – all your favorite games, whether it's me and you, you and Dave Hickey, you and Bob, me and Bob, who are special guests abound. There's all kinds of great things at that YouTube page. Interviews, we're going to have the Honky Tonk Jukebox up there. Um, part of your daily routine, I know. Sure, it's weekly, anyhow. Last play of the game coming here from Nelson County. Here comes the snap. They get it to Rodriguez. Rodriguez is going to throw. He's headed towards the end zone. It's an end over end pass. Knocked down and incomplete by the Alpha Vista defense, and that'll do it. Another shutout for the Colonels. They win 48 to 0 over Nelson County. Subway post game show on the way when you come back to 1055 KD Country. Apple Auto Glass is your windshield repair and replacement center in Lynchburg. You get a free car wash with all windshields replaced in the shop. Apple Auto Glass wants the fans to enjoy the boys of fall this high school football season. When I feel that chill. Smell that fresh cut grass I'm back in my helmet Cleats and shoulder pads Where the boys are fall Apple Auto Glass salutes the boys of fall Our thanks to these members Of the Katy Country Sports Club El Cerrito and Alta Vista Throw on a sombrero Shake your maracas It's El Cerrito time Authentic Mexican cuisine Only at El Cerrito Robertson Auto Sales, Lynchburg, dealers with a passion for great quality pre-owned vehicles. We love cars and trucks, and it shows in our inventory. Aubrey Rosser, attorney at law, going above and beyond the courtroom. Your choice for any and all legal advice. Serving Alta Vista, Lynchburg, and Roanoke areas. One stop mark, Main Street, Alta Vista, where the gas is cheap, beverages are cold, and the chicken is kicking. Mad Biddy's Antiques, 105 Wood Lane, just off of Main Street. Come find what you didn't know you were looking for. Dairy Freeze, serving ice cream, yogurt, fries, hamburger, hot dogs, and fresh chili since 1961. From their Main Street location. Your home for Colonel Sports Coverage, 105.5 KD Country. Subway post-game show is once again a Subway celebration show. Colonels win 48-0 over the Nelson County Governor's Oscar. It was uh, an interesting game in a lot of respects. We kept commenting early on about how well Nelson County came out, good game plan, they executed, they were playing spirited football. Colonel's talent really just seemed to take over there as the game wore on, though. It, it got tipped to Captain Nelson County, but Alta Vista just had a better team here tonight. Well, I think they had a better team talent-wise, and certainly depth-wise, I think, as well. And we talked about Nelson County trying to rebuild this program. Uh, and again, I'm going to say it again. The cupboard is not bare. Uh, they're young. Uh, they run this thing wing extremely well. They're going to they're going to be a formidable opponent for some people as the season rolls on uh, next year. Yeah, you're right. It's uh, And, again, we mentioned fun place to come up to here at Nelson County. Unfortunately, governors aren't going to be on the schedule next year. They're uh, sort of shifting their way out of the Dogwood District, which, you know, if you've been following BHSL sports, districts aren't even really in existence anymore anyway. They, they are it's more for scheduling purposes. You really don't have to be in the district anymore because you're in a conference now. And Nelson does not share a conference with anybody in the Dogwood District, so they're going to play some teams that are uh, a little more at their um, school enrollment level and also travel issues there as well. I mean, it's a long trip from Nelson down to Dan River and Chatham. But anyway, we digress. We'll take a time out. When we bring it back, we'll do a little scoring recap. We'll tell you a little bit more about this game. We'll talk some about next week. And, of course, we could forget the Chris Owen Good Hands Award player of the game situation. That will all be fun. It's all when you come back, Colonels. A big winner, 48 to nothing over Nelson County. All live on 105.5 KD Country. Tonight's game is brought to you by Perkins Tire and Auto Service in Chatham. And we do mean service because Perkins Tire will pick up and deliver your vehicle. Call Perkins Tire in Chatham, 434-432-1100. 432-1100. Whether you need brand name tires or service, 
Call Calvin, Stanley, or Frankie at Perkins Tire and Service Center on Highway 29 in Tight Squeeze, just south of Chatham. Perkins Tire and Service Center, your authorized Michelin Tire dealer. <coughs> Unfortunately, I have some bad news. How bad is it, Doctor? We've done all we can. Your heat pump's not gonna make it. Oh, no. <laughs> Honey, it's going to be okay. We'll call Select Air Mechanical and Electrical, 332-2600. With over 60 years' experience, they'll have us comfortable again in no time. I recommend Select Air to all my patients. Call 332-2600 or visit selectairmechanical.com. They can handle all your home comfort needs, and they're an authorized train dealer. It's hard to stop a train. No one knows trucks like we know trucks. GMC, come on in, bring the family to see your friends at Highview Motors, Highview Motors, GMC, from small to tall, we've got it all, Highview Motors, GMC. Your station for high school sports play-by-play -play is 105.5 KD Country. Award-winning high school sports coverage here on 105.5 KD Country. Another game is wrapped up for us. Fall in Virginia, fun place to be, especially up here in the mountains of Nelson County. Can't be good high school football on a Friday night. Nice weather. Colonels had a nice time. They did a lot of scoring. Oscar mentioned it. Uh, five different guys in the end zone. Destin Brown scored early on a seven-yard touchdown run. That was the only scoring in the first quarter. It was 7 nothing in the first quarter. You can see why we were talking so much about how well Nelson was playing. Juan Thornhill, 31-yard touchdown run in the second quarter. That was followed up by another Destin Brown touchdown run, 44-yarder. Curls lead 21 nothing halftime, and then they really blew it open. Yeah, and those scores in the second quarter were nine minutes apart. So mm. that just tells you, and again, without a possession from the Colonels, that tells you how what a, what a great job Nelson County did. Controlling the football. It was 14 nothing for a long time in this football game. Better part of the first half, it was 14 nothing. You're right. Nelson did control the football. Second half, Alta Vista comes out, scoring their first possession. Clyde L. Moon from 20 yards out. Juan Thornhill hit Nelson Dews for a 36-yard pass. Clyde L. Moon had a long run that set himself up for a one-yard touchdown. And then Donovan Montague had a rushing touchdown in the fourth quarter. Oscar, it was a 48 nothing Colonel victory. Walker Allen, I want to say, was 5 of 6 on extra points, and then Nick Foley, 1 of 1 on extra points. And uh, defensively, I mean, I don't know how you describe the Colonels' defense tonight. It, was, it truly was a team effort, and a lot of that was because of the style of football that Nelson was playing. But definitely a lot of different guys in on stops today on defense. Nelson did a good job on first and second down moving the football, but when they got behind the chains, they just don't have a mechanism that they can catch back up. Yeah. Uh, they rely on the run just – there's just – they can't throw the ball. Um, so when they did get behind the chains, they just, again, don't have that mechanism to get back up. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. If they get off schedule, it's, a, it's, it's not a good thing, whereas a team like the Colonels can get off schedule in the in, – Deal with a little bit there because of the playmakers. You're not going to be off schedule when you tune into our live broadcast tomorrow from the Gretna Old Timers Jubilee. Speaking of Gretna, they cut into that Appomattox lead. They're trailing 14 7 now, later stages of the fourth quarter. So uh, we can get you an update before the Subway Post Game Show wraps up. We'll do it here, but we do have to wrap it up pretty quick, Oscar. And of course, we wouldn't be on the internet if it wasn't for our good friend Chris Owen, All State agent. Lynchburg. Football fans are always in good hands with Chris Owen. He's a uh, former Division I player himself down there at Wake Forest, so uh, he'll take care of you if you're a high school sports fan. Just go see him, and uh, he's going to take care of us with some uh, player of the game time. Oscar, what, uh, who you got? I usually go first. I'll make you go first this time. So, uh, it's easy for me for, for Nelson County and Chambers bulk of the carries. I uh, just did an outstanding job moving the ball for him, so again, an easily pick for me is Ray Chambers. I like that pick. I, you know, I hate doing the easy thing and going right here with you. Um, I'm trying to find a reason to go somewhere else. But, yeah, Ray Chambers, he's a, he's a solid back. He's hard to find in this single-wing offense. He's got some talent to go with him uh, to balance it out a little bit. He's a, he's a good hard runner. Just a sophomore, too. So I'll go Ray Chambers as well. 
Now on the other side for the Colonels, boy, it really gets difficult. You had a lot of different guys scoring, as we know, a lot of different guys making plays. I'm going to go with Clyde L. Moon. I think Oscar might have wanted to go with that, too. Clyde missed the last couple ball games, had to sit him out. He came back, came back in uh, in full force tonight, a 20-yard TD, a one-yard TD. Great plays on defense. Actually, I was shaken up there in the first half, as you remember, but he shook that off, bounced back, and played, well, played uh, very well. And it would have been easy for Clyde L. to uh, let that fumble get to him, but he, yeah. he came right back from that on the next defensive play and almost uh, took the ball single-handed away. Uh, I like your pick, but that's not where I'm going. Nice. Uh, we're in Nelson County, so what oh, choice do yeah. I have? I have to go with Nelson County. Perfect. Uh, okay. Nelson uh, did a very solid job in the secondary, was able to, to get up in the line and, and bust up some of those uh, running plays. Got the 36 yard reception from Juan on a very, very nice uh, move and uh, adaptation to Juan being scrambling. So for me, Nelson Dews. I like that. Nelson in Nelson. That's very nice. Nelson Dews with a touchdown reception tonight. And I've always said Nelson is a little bit underrated. You know, he's surrounded by a lot of great athletes. So maybe he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. He, uh, he certainly does deserve all of it. Great kid, great player. He's still just a junior, too. Well, that's right, and he's filled in admirably in, uh, in the corner position that came available uh, this year. And, and again, uh, outstanding job by Nelson tonight. And, yeah. uh, one more shout out. Hey, you got to be coming up from Surfside. Be careful. You got to be careful coming up from Surfside Beach. You listen in and on the Tune In app there. And uh, again, we love shout outs. Not as many tonight. I need to start doing just a sort of a roll call like, like uh, Coach Mike Cartolero does in basketball season. They're listening at that point. That's their problem. They just got to announce everybody. But anyway, we'll start to wrap things up here on the Subway Post Game Show. Of course, Meatball Marinara, we a $5 foot long of a month. You can't beat that. I love those cookies. They got three cookies for a dollar, Oscar. Three for a dollar. Three for a dollar. That might be after seven, I believe. You couldn't do If you had a Katie Country dollar saver, you couldn't get a better deal than that. <laughs> Good point. You should visit the dollar saver often, though, because you get some great half price deals. But anyway, also, of course, our producer, Eleanor Haney, back at home base, player of the game, as always. And, again, she'll be in action tomorrow at the Grand Old Timers Jubilee. Go say hey. Bobby Rice, our big winner on the win with Subway. Don't know how that works. We'll fill you in next week. Colonel's in action next week against Chatham Cavaliers. Always a good ball club there that Paul Greck has had. They are uh, got their eye on the playoffs again, so they're going to come in and bring the fight to Alta Vista. Make sure you tune in for that Subway pregame show around 6.30. And, of course, the game brought to you by all these fine folks. English Construction, which are our high school athletes and exciting and injury-free game. Mentioned Finch, Funeral and Cremation Services, a family serving family since 1905. Select Air, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're authorized train dealer. It's hard to stop a train. Perkins, Tire, and Auto Serve, Highway 29 in Chatham. Free pickup and delivery. I don't know if they're going to bring the Cavaliers up from Chatham uh, next week, but Calvin will definitely take care of you, as we've said many times. Apple Auto Glass in Lynchburg. Free car wash when you get a new windshield installed. Highview Motors. Small to tall. Highview has it all. English is so much more than a hardware store. $15 rebate on Pella Storm Doors. Apple Markets. Check out the weekly specials at all the area Apple Market locations. Tyree Littles Heating and Cooling. Keeping you cool in the summer, warm in the winter, comfortable in between. Feller Chevrolet. Short drive will save you money. Of course, they sponsor... Our online YouTube rebroadcast, El Cazador, a great place for family and friends to dine, and the First National Bank, dedicated to bringing you extraordinary customer service. Of course, our online broadcast, whether you're in Surfside, whether you're on the road, whether you're up there in Cape Cod with those Colonel fans, New York City, doesn't matter. That's all brought to you by Chris Owen, your all-state insurance agent in Forest, or in Lynchburg, excuse me, you don't have to be in Lynchburg or Alta Vista to uh, give Chris Owen a call. He'll uh, he'll give you a nice quote out there on some insurance. Of course, this is the Subway pregame show. That's going to wrap it up for us. For us. Colonels, 48 nothing, a winner over the Nelson County Governors. Tune in for the Jubilee tomorrow. Till then, keep it tuned to 105.5 KD Country.